Hello, hello, hello. Live. Hey, what's up? 19 viewers, one like. One like equals one district or something. I don't know. How's it going, Kalo? Or Kiao? Chow? I don't know how to say your name, sorry. Zhao Kao Jia, how's it going? Zhao Kai Zia? Nobody had to say your name. Edge of Sky 6, how's it going, man? Oh, so we're going to play in Cyrus tonight. Woohoo! Potato is streaming. Yes, I am, sir. Alright, so we are going to be playing Cyrus. Let's go ahead and double check that mods haven't been activated. Doo -doo -doo. Just got the secret tact UI mod. Cyrus the Great. Diggity. Alright, so let's have a talk about this. Uh, so he's good at surprise wars. He's also good at culture victories. He's got the immortal. So I'm thinking maybe like an early war game transition into a culture game. Maybe, maybe. Kind of having to think about that. Or we could just go full war. Could be more fun to go full war. Uh, let's go ahead... We will play on a small... I want to just do a small Pangea game. I've, I've been playing a lot of these kind of weird, kooky games with strange setups. I will do Abundant Resources and Low Sea Levels. There's a bit more land and a bit more resources in general. But I think I'm happy with the disco with the standard settings. How long will this last? Well, I don't know yet. I haven't made that decision. So, game setup. Cyrus, five random leaders, deity. Nine city-states, two... Mm. We'll leave disaster intensity on two. We play a lot with it on four. I figure a nice two game is fine. Pangea, small map size, abundant resources, low sea level. Domination on a huge map, that doesn't sound fun to me. Just being straight up there. I forgot to turn off the music. Do you know anything about another expansion ever happening? No, I have no insider information about another expansion happening. Uh, if I did know, which I do not, I would not be able to talk about it. Because I would most likely be under uh, an NDA. And um, developers usually don't give out that sort of information to people they haven't worked with NDA stuff before. And they usually don't do it if you, uh, if it's not necessary. Like the marketing of it hasn't ramped up yet. So until we see marketing information about the next expansion, you can almost certainly assume that I know nothing about it. If indeed there will be another expansion. Let me just disable music. Uh, all right. So I think the very first thing that we want to be doing is taking a moment. Uh, I need an assistant. What's a good beginner save? I'm getting my cousin to play. What's a good save for a new player? Rome is just always a really good starter save because they have really good bonuses that you don't have to do a lot to take advantage of. All right, let's talk about Fall of Babylon. We get plus two movement for the first 10 turns after declaring a surprise war on a major civilization. We also get plus five loyalty per turn in occupied cities with a garrisoned unit and declaring the surprise war only counts as a formal war for the purposes says oh my god it's so hard to say my s's uh grievances and warmongering uh <clears throat> my mouth is very dry and it's very warm in this room so it's kind of harder to speak than normal so this this uh this this kind of pushes us in the direction of war then we have satrapies which is plus one trade route capacity with the political philosophy civic. Receive plus two gold and plus one culture for routes between your own cities. Roads built in your territory are one level more advanced than usual. So uh, this kind of incentivizes us to trade uh, externally for extra movement, but also trade heavily internally, which uh, can be you know quite useful in a domination game. So this is a very helpful thing. Also, the extra trade route is very nice. This is a kind of more of a neutral bonus. I think it's as good in most cases. 
We also get access to the Immortal, the Persian unique melee unit that replaces the Swordsman. This is a very, very powerful unit. Uh, it has a ranged attack as well, and it's strong defense strength. We also have the Pyrodiza, which is basically a paradise. It unlocks the builder ability to build it. You get plus one culture, plus two gold, plus two appeal, plus one culture for each adjacent holy site and theater square, and get plus one gold for each adjacent commercial hub and city center. Additional culture and th tourism as you advance through the technology and civic tree. Cappy built snow tundra, blah, 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 blah. So very much so a cultural and war civ. Uh, is this your favorite civ game? I, I would say so. So no transition into culture. I don't know if we're going to do a, 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 an early war into culture transition yet. Haven't made that decision. Uh, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing pretty good other than the fact that I'm absolutely boiling my bollocks off because uh, it's winter and we have the heating on and I'm sitting right in front of a radiator. What's up, Rotato? Glad to catch a live stream. What's up, man? Thanks for stopping by. Let's turn on yields here and start explorizing. Very flat land here, which I'm not a fan of. Also looks like we might be near either snow or coastline. Do I want to settle in place? We are on a plains hill, so we get will get that plus one production. Are there any really important things that I'd like to move towards? Uh, as far as I can tell, if I move this way, I will get access to a 2-2 two -two tile, but that's pretty neutral considering if I settle in place, I'll get a 2-2 two -two tile and a 2-1 tile. So I think there's really not a whole lot of benefit to moving my settler this game. I don't have easy luxuries to settle on. If this wine was right here, I might consider crossing the river and settling on it, but I think we're going to just settle in place and let it uh, be the way that it is. Fought to take monuments, clean spam settlers in the same phase. Yeah, Indonesia is a fun sieve. Okay, uh, so in terms of our opening moves, I need to make sure... So with this production level, it looks like we're working the wrong tile. Yep, we're working the copper tile. What we want to do is we want to switch over to the two food, one production tile. Yes, we do miss out on the bonus one production and the two gold. However, this tile allows us to grow in seven turns as opposed to 14. Seven turns growth is really, really important. Uh, really important thing is um, the lower your population... The lower your population is, the more valuable food is. The earlier the game is, the more valuable food is. So on and so forth. I don't want to be like everybody. I watch one of your videos every night. It helps me sleep for a reason. Thank you so much, Edge of Sky. I appreciate that you uh, watch my videos. I watch other people's videos, so I know how that feels. Two tiles right would be a good campus. Uh, well, that is unfortunately a diamonds tile and you cannot place districts on luxuries. So it looks like early mining here would serve me quite well. And that feeds quite nicely into bronze working, which feeds quite nicely into immortals, which do require iron. So I think early bronze working might be the move here. I'll, I think I'm going to open with a slinger because that's a more militaristic opening. You want smiley faces? Watch when your career one city and your nephew comes in and it's so freaking cute. I want smiley faces. To this day, anytime he comes in to me when I'm like at my computer, he starts trying to talk to chat. Even though there is no chat, Pepe Hans. It's been a while since the last stream. Yeah, it has been. This Christmas is a busy time. Hopefully in the new year, I'll be able to just stream like multiple times a week. No problemo. Make multiple videos a week. All that jazz. Wow, we just got a relic, which is very interesting. It means we have a very strong faith economy early. Uh, also feeds potentially into a tourism game. And if I do want to do a tourism game, it might be a good idea to f finagle my way into astrology. Hmm. So I think on that end, I'm going to go mining into astrology, which is normally not something that I would do. Uh, care to explain why amenities are not that important because they just quite simply are not uh minus one you you can go up like to like minus three amenities or something and not suffer very big penalties uh meme channel agree every proposal except trade and suggestion uh maybe i right, said so thank you for all the entertainment you got me to save and i wholeheartedly agree t is just t is only just okay I, thank you so much i appreciate that you appreciate what i make um right so we have astrology as an option, I might go for a fast settler here. A fast second settler is good. I could go fast builder. 
we do have two population now. We don't have another food tile, which is worrisome. Tempted to purchase the sheep. I'll maybe purchase the sheep next turn. I could go builder. I think I'm going to go settler here. Haven't tuned in in a bit, been a bit busy. Ah, no worries, Brandon. Thank you so much for being a sponsor of the channel, dude. And you've been doing it for a whole month. Nice. Now that is a good campus. Yeah, unfortunately, it's uh, another one of these mountain tiles. So the most I can get is a plus three out of this, which isn't terrible. But it's far from ideal. So we met a city state and we were, in fact, the first to meet them. Which is really, really nice because it tells me one thing. It tells me there's probably not an AI in this direction. And it also tells me that I can go for early monument in my capital and early holy site a little bit easier. Who deserves more credit? Okay, there's mining. I'm going to work on clearing out this barb camp. I'll hit it once and then rest. And that should do the trick. Hello, America. Where are you? I didn't see you. I'm going to try and get a kill here. You're going to rest for a few turns. Could have sent them a delegation and decided against it. Let's go ahead and grab that there for the sheep tile. Now, in terms of our pantheon, we got a very, very fast pantheon, so we could go for religious settlements. I'm not going to do the pantheon exploit uh, because we've done. I think we've done that enough. Uh, I could get a free builder. Religious Settlements goes really, really well with any sort of war game. But if we're going for a tourism game, it might be worth it to pick up something else. Glad to see you today, Heather. Thank you so much, Heather. Appreciate that. Uh, hello, Potato. Will you be spamming Paradise this game? I don't know. Uh, could you do an opener type explainer video here? I, I hear you mention them when you're watching your videos, but I don't always know what they mean. Uh, th that's sort of on the list of things that I need to get around to. Definitely doing a video explaining different kind of opening paths that you can go. But basically what an opener is, it's just like the first um, sort of, I would say like four major decisions you make for your civilization. Uh, so an example of one is like, where do you settle? Uh, is So where you settle kind of impacts your opener. Uh, what's the first thing that you build is part of your opener. And then what is the first uh, tech that you push for? And what is the first civic that you push for? Those would be like the four components of an opener. So an example of an opener might be, I settle on a diamond and that enables me to gold purchase a builder to push for, um, you know, uh, a campus play, right? Where I go for early campuses. And then I also go for an early government plaza. I still do use the exploit, but only a few times. You could rush astrology. We are working on astrology right now. Um, I just haven't decided what pantheon I want to take. Uh, I, I won't be doing the exploit. I already said that. Earth goddess is really nice, but I really like the free settler. Like, it's just so powerful to get a free settler that I'm going to take it. Now, I could go settle on this sugar, this sugar, or this sugar. I think I might settle on this sugar over here. All right, that is a scout. If the scout moves to the south, okay, I'm being denounced. That means he's looking to declare war on me. The scout did not move to the south, so I will move my settler back east. I'd like to catch this guy. I'm not going to be giving you any of your demands. Barbarians, plus one production. Stay healing. I'm going to work on foreign trade to get the early trader up. Although I'm going to work on craftsmanship because I might have to build military soon to fight off America. Please give me the kill. Beautiful. There's archery boosted. And 
in terms of where to settle. I'm, I'm would really like to settle on the stone based on the terrain around here. Um, but I think I'll settle one north of the stone or maybe on the jungle hill. Let's just do a little bit of exploration here. Okay, so you should be able to hit that and then hit it again and then promote and kill it before it spawns anything. So with the reveal of that silver, I'm going to settle on the silver because it'll give me error score for settling on desert. There's Cleopatra. It's an honor to meet you. So you're all the way out over here. And I do have the cash to send you a delegation. I don't want to piss off too many civs. Okay, you're reasonably happy. Go ahead and take your battle cry promotion. Then you can clear that out next turn. There is that barb camp dealt with. So I'm opting to settle over here. First of all, because I'm settling on silver, which will give me an amenity to sell to the AI. Uh, second of all, it's on desert terrain, which will give me a bonus for desert. It opens up the options for me going for early pyramid, which is an option for me because I went for early mining. It's near enough to stone to get me a quarry, and I can get quarries potentially, which will help me get to the pyramids. I could also go for Petra if there's a good Petra in here. And it's also near mountains, which means if I want to get holy sites, then it's a good candidate for that. So now I'm working that silver. Now, unfortunately, Egypt already has... No, she doesn't actually. And she will give me five gold per turn for that silver. So I'm going to go ahead and take that deal. Five gold per turn is a lot. Uh, okay, we have an issue. America has found my capital city. Which means uh, we could be dead. If he declares war. So unfortunately, I can't walk my settlers out that way. Let's try and get a warrior out. I'll be able to purchase a slinger in two turns. Granted a free recon unit who will sit right here and fortify on a defensive tile. There's the war declaration. All right. All righty. It's going to be a hard game. Problem is I didn't scout where his army was, so that was like a mistake. This is a very hard game. Is he on his continent? So he's setting up for a double hit here. Purchase next turn. So now I need to just go straight for archery. I can't even stop up for religion, unfortunately. Uh, very unfortunate that I didn't scout where he was. This guy dies next turn. Does he have to eat damage for me? I think he unfortunately does. He has to just eat that. So unfortunately, I think I die here just by virtue of like not seeing America's army early enough. Like that's really all it came down to. I mean, like, here's the thing. I've built two things this game. I built a slinger and a settler. There's very little I could do to this without advanced warning because I just didn't see where America was. Right. And I maybe walked a little bit too far away with my warrior. I was a bit uh, non-conservative with it. So I think I'm just dead here, unfortunately, just because his army came out of the fog of war uh, and the terrain was too rough to get my slinger back in time. So that's all she wrote. Can't wait till I get the Ottomans. I think um, if America didn't have his same continent bonus of plus five combat strength there, maybe I'd have a chance to hold that off. Because I would have had another turn to get a guy out. Plus, my city was settled against a mountain, which meant it was very easy to surround it. Just a bit of an unfortunate thing there. That he just, like, basically turn one, he, like, 
I met him too early. He was too close. I didn't see his army. Like it's re that's all it comes down to. I just didn't scout his army. Not much you can do about it. Uh, I actually really don't like this start. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to start like Flatland Desert is just not a fun way to play. What did I think today is Friday? It's only Thursday. It's my first day on break. Nice. From the first stirrings of life beneath water, the great beasts of the Stone Age. The only mildly annoying thing about that is that I invested like ten minutes of like, um, now begins your greatest quest. tactical maneuvering and decision making and stuff like that. On towards the stars. Not that big a deal. The crown, Cyrus, King of Persia, for you. I don't even think I was very greedy. Good God, can I just not get Tundra starts, please? Just like, I really don't like it when I start near Tundra or Desert. Um, From the first stirrings of life beneath water, the great I don't think I had fresh water there. I, I, I'd have to double check with my memory there. I like, the minimum start is like at least fresh water, right? Preferably not near Tundra or Desert. Uh, like I'm also really disappointed that that game ended because we found like a relic on our first tribal village like this is a much more acceptable start right this is far more interesting from a decision making standpoint because I have to make the decision um do I stay in place so let me let me talk about why this is like a really interesting start so do I stay in place be coastal on a plains hill uh and get all the benefits that come with being coastal or do I move on to the chalk the cocoa settle that be able to work a 2-2 two -two tile give up a 2-3 tile um but here's the problem if i settle in place um the best place for the harbor is beside the crab but it's actually on top of the crab but this over here is actually a better place for a harbor which means i might, might want to settle on this tile so there's actually three viable tiles for me to settle on in this but um this is like by sort of objective measures the best tile purely just because it's beside bananas and cocoa so by virtue of that i just settle in place my computer takes upwards of five minutes on restart i've accepted some bad tundra starts i get honestly just if you can find like 80 to 100 dollars get an ssd install the game on an ssd and you'll never have that problem again so we do get the boost for sailing which is cool uh, do I want to go for early sailing? No, I don't think I want to go f like maybe early plantations would be okay. It would get me a lot of gold. These tiles don't really get much better um, than they currently are. So any sort of tile based unlocking strategy isn't amazing here. I don't think I'm going to go for an early religion this game unless again I find a relic. I think I will go for early mining, although this time I might go for animal husbandry just to be closer to archers. I'll open with slinger and I'll scout a little bit more. Well, no, this time I'm going to open scout to be a little bit more conservative. Like, I don't mind starting near desert like this, right? But I don't like it when my city starts right on desert. Would crossing the river to get a plus four dock be a good idea? Yeah, we briefly talked about it. It was a viable option, which is what made this starting location so interesting. But I found it far more interesting. We should actually be working the bananas here because you'll grow faster. The gold is nice, but... Growth is worth more than gold in the very, very early game. I'm also going to get a slinger here. I'm going to go sort of a unit heavy opener. We were the first to meet on Tana Narivo. Tana is a good city to meet. Gives you 2% culture for each great person you research. So that kind of pushes me in the direction of a culture game right now is kind of what's going on in my head. Let's make sure we lock in that chocolate tile. There is an amazing Petra over here. However, one really important consideration that people always forget when they get their hard on for Petra. Okay, that's France. That's really bad that I met her this early. Uh, I'm going to have to send her a delegation. And hope that she is friendly. Um, one really important consideration for Petra that a lot of people forget is you have to have a way to get the Petra. It's not good enough to just settle 
a city with an amazing Petra potential. You have to actually be able to settle there. And a lot of things are pushing me towards a religion game, a religious culture game right now. The fact that I found an early natural wonder with culture and faith on it. The fact that I'm against France, which means I might be able to use early war to take her out. Um, so, yeah, so anyway, the, the idea of Petra, you have to be able to get the Petra, okay? It, it's not good enough to just have a city that has amazing Petra potential. The most important part is actually getting the Petra. So you might say that, oh, you know, if you just settle over here somewhere and you'll get like all the Petra tiles and it'll be amazing. But the problem with that is there's nothing over here that gives you the production to actually get the Petra. That's why, in actual fact, I think the best place to put the Petra city is right here. Because this city has access to chops to these wood chops that it can use to actually get the Petra. I don't like that France is already moving in my direction. So I'm going to bring my warrior back down this way. Nice. Hurricane, typhoon thing. If there are no dogs in There's animal husbandry. We're going to swing back up for astrology here. I really don't like being this close to the AI in my games. Really, really don't like it. Um, I'm going to have to forego our religion this game. So we are going to do a bit of an orth unorthodox opening strategy here, which is basically murder France. Uh, we're just going to straight up kill France with an early war um, with archers. Ideally, I would get another settler first. Just so I have a second city. Yeah, he, she, she is just being way too aggressive. I have no choice. So a lot of things have pushed me in a culture game direction. Now I have no choice but to be aggressive and essentially like defend myself from this forward settling that's going on right now so let's see if we can get our units back to defend to deter her from declaring war normally i really don't like doing these like uber early death wars where it's like we just fight to the death because i don't have a choice I do not like this. This settler is going to run out for the Petra potential. It'll also give me lots of culture that might help. About to get craftsmanship, will allow, which will allow me to build units more efficiently. Without craftsmanship. There's craftsmanship, urban planning, anagog. A will we'll work on military tradition. So yeah, she's looking like she wants to go to war with me. Settle there. Delete that pin. You're going to work on a slinger to defend yourself. We should have the money to upgrade slingers. She's definitely looking to go to war with me. No two ways about it. Expecting the war declaration any turn now. There it is. Alright. We have archery in one turn. May the forces of evil be Fortify, fortify, upgrade. Buy that tile, upgrade. You're going to simply step back. Mining into bronze working. Okay. Change tiles and ray. Good call. Thank you for reminding me. Forgot that the AI really likes to work these dead tiles. Okay, I actually wasn't expecting them to step forward so aggressively. 
Um, that's a really big problem for me because now I have to move this warrior and I really don't want to. So if I focus fire this guy, I can hit him with three different units and really do a number on him. This archer is likely dead. Okay, he survives. Very sorry, Laurie, but you better witness a murder. <laughs> okay, there's military tradition, which is really, really good. Come back for foreign thingies. So we can get this kill, right? This is a kill game, correct? It really needs to be abundantly fucking clear how much I hate that it doesn't tell you exactly the outcome of a fight. Swap. Step. You're in a little bit of a vulnerable position, but you're also in a good position because you have health. And you're about to promote. I There's no way that should be a kill. He's on a hill. He does have a promotion, I guess. Okay, that was a kill. We have a Pantheon. Let's see here. Fertility rights. I would like that free builder. Uh, far more important. I think I'm just going to take Earth Goddess this game. It's the only Pantheon that I can get that doesn't require me to do anything. Unexpected loss on that archer. Yeah, it's like, I don't know. It's fine. Part of the problem is she has intel on opponent's movements, which gives her a big advantage. Which I'm not a fan of. You can kill there. You're healing? Okay. Who deserves more credit? All right, so we are surviving just fine. Do I shoot or promote? I think I want to promote to be able to do as much damage in a single turn as possible. I'm going to bring this archer out this way to be able to shoot anyone coming on here. All right, bronze working. Pull off the production exploit. The production exploit was patched. I put that at the top of the video days after it was released when I talked about the production exploit. Okay. So this guy needs to retreat, which means I need to open up a safe tile for him to retreat to, which is that tile right there. That means this archer, this slinger also needs to die. You're going to come here to heal. You're going to come there. Uh, we have a good mix. I'm going to go for another archer now. So the unfortunate thing is I'm on a strict time schedule to kill France because every turn that goes by, she's making 20 signs per turn, which gets her closer to swordsman. If she gets swordsman, my life becomes hell. Okay, so we have obliterated her army. She still has an army. Once she gets archers, my life also becomes hell. Just like pretty much anything she unlocks right now makes my life hell. Okay, let's pick up early empire. Is he naming units? I can name units if you guys want. I don't have, I, I don't, you can't name units until they get to a certain experience level though. Okay. She has built science buildings, which I do not approve of. Let's get ourselves a traitor for Ray. No peace. You started this war. I am murdering you into the ground because it's the only way I get back into this game. It's turn 37. I have one city. 
You've completely obliterated my game, France, and there will be no mercy. You monumental bitch. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry about declaring war at you. No, no mercy. No mercy for the wicked. Become friends with the Ottomans? Alright, yeah, sure, fine. Okay. This is... Okay, chariots are a problem. Problem I really can't deal with, unfortunately. Um... Slinger in the city is a pain in the ass, but it's one that I can deal with. So, primary objective, kill units, then the city. You're going to be garrison promoted. I want to have a mixture. We're going to teleport you over to Ray. Pick up state workforce. Get more archers. We stopped off for a little bit of infrastructure, but we can't let our momentum die. We have to take Pingala here, which I really don't like. I can hit this city and get a promotion. You can't, so you're going to rest. Nope. Okay, like I said, enemy units are the priority. If we kill their units, they can't fight back. Would you... Why can't I pillage this trader? Can somebody explain to me why I can't pillage this trade route? Trade with the capital city. Shoot. Promote. Shoot. 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 Attack. Wait one turn, then attack. Shoot. Anyone close to a level? You're close to a level. How about you? I would like to click on you. Okay, you are going to hit the city. Want to get? We want to maximize how much experience we get from taking the city. Basically. All right. So now I think I have a big enough army. I can stop off for something else, like a monument. I already have a really good culture gain. It'd be good to have a second builder. Repair that monument. The good news is we do have a campus now, uh, which is fine. If you fortify a unit, it can only pillage if you stop the fortification by waking the unit up. That's dumb. Keep the city. Okay, so now we're just trying to navigate our units towards her. I have a builder here. Wish I could afford that tile, but I cannot. I could lay down a Pyrodiza here on one of these tiles. I think I'm going to. There's another player up here. This is looking like a war game. Let's grab the monument. May as well have like turbocharged culture this game. Shoot the warrior. It's the highest threat unit that I can do damage to. Kill that. She doesn't have walls yet, which is good. Need to block. Settle up near the river and get Petra near Luru. 
Okay, let me explain why this is not a helpful thing to say. First of all, Petra is unlocked at mathematics. Unlocking mathematics right now would take me 50 turns. You're asking me to care about things that happen over 100 turns from now at the current game state. I'm worried about the next 10 turns. Second of all, settle near the river with what? Which city do you think I have the time to acquire a new settler in? Hint, it's none of them. I have to be fully committed to the war. We've already talked about the fact that I would like to get a Petra here because it's a really good Petra city that has chops to be able to get the Petra. It's just like, it's not a viable option for me to do right now. How long will the stream take place? Pretty much until I just decide to stop streaming. Is like the usual plan. I meant in the future. Yeah, exactly. That's fine. Um, we, we'd already talked about getting all this stuff online, right? So, again, just not helpful right now. All right, so we're going to build a pirate diesel, partially for error score, partially to actually turn one of these uh, tiles into useful things. It's not ideal. I don't want one here, but I'll put it there for now. You have a governor title for Pingalit? That is helpful. Thank you for reminding me. I sometimes get caught up in the war aspect and forget about that stuff. I uh, appreciate that. All right, working on political philosophy. All right, let's 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 take a moment here to adjust because I was, my brain was so mentally focused on the war. Um, we have a builder coming out. Hopefully we hit iron and we can go for our unique unit. I would like to get that T online, which means I have to go back for irrigation, which is like, I don't know if I can do that. It's all good, Despicable Waffle. You're not in trouble. It was just... Uh, I wanted to point out that you weren't being helpful, is, is really um, all it was. So you're going to step here. You're going to step here. You're going to step here. So we're shifting our army to put our full health units in front and to take control of this side of the river because it's a hill, uh, which means it's hard to attack into. These guys are standing on farms, which means they can heal. And we're going to focus on killing the easier to kill unit, which I think is the Spearman. You have a promotion. I could take Arrow Storm here or I could do damage. I think I take the Arrow Storm for damage down the road. I move this Warrior forward and this Archer forward and this Warrior forward. This Warrior will eventually swap with this Archer is the goal. Are you going for domination or culture right now? Uh, a lot of things are pushing me in the direction of culture uh, in terms of like an economic standpoint. But unfortunately, we've been forced into this uh, to the death war by France. So it might be a domination game. Yeah, it sort of looks down on anyone who doesn't understand the game as much as him. It's, uh, I'm, it's not that I look down on anyone who doesn't understand the game as much as me. It's... um. Bad backseat gaming kind of is just very um, exhaustive, right? It's very, um, it takes a lot of enthusiasm away. So like an example of good backseat gaming was someone was like, oh, hey, you forgot your governor title. That was really good. Thank you. Um, but something like, you should get a Petra. That would be so cool right now. And it's like, well, I'm immersed in like uh, a 30 long, a 30 turn long war. and I can't really think about Petra right now. And now I have to divert energy to explain why that's not a good idea when I feel like that's really obvious that that's not a good idea. It's all good. Um, okay. So, did we find iron? It's also really, really hot in my room, and that makes me unhappy because <laughs> it's so fucking warm, dude. It's a stream, he should expect it. Well, I'm the streamer, so I sh I'm the person who sets the tone and expectation of how people should participate in the community. Um, I don't think I, I don't think I was overly rude, was I? It was, I, I didn't call him an idiot. I didn't tell him he was bad. I just, I feel like I just kind of like, um, was more like mildly perturbed that I had to explain something that I felt was really obvious. Hey, Amy, how's it going? So 
So I want to get irrigation here so I can get these luxuries online. What about my airship tactic? Was that a good backseat gaming? Uh, which airship tactic was that? Yeah, I, I, the other part of it is I already talked about Petra earlier. So it was kind of like, come on, guys. I, I should maybe, maybe I should be a little bit more patient with people. It's fine. It's not a big deal. Uh, right. So in terms of what we want to work in our, in our capital, I'd love to get my government plaza up. Unfortunately, I don't want to put my government plaza on any of these tiles. You must live with a person with a female persuasion who lives with a thermostat. True. It's freezing in Dublin. It's absolutely balls to walls roasting. Uh, you got to understand, I sit right in front of a radiator. So when the lady of the house turns on the rad, I fucking want to jump out the window. <laughs> it's that bad. Jesus. Ugh. Okay. How about this game? Respect the fact that the player doesn't have to teach me the answer. I think whoa, I think we're I think we're reading way too much into it. If the person who made the suggestion to me uh was upset, I'm really sorry. I didn't mean to address you in a negative way. I'm very, very sorry. Um I apologize for that if I was at all negative towards you and I, I didn't mean it that way at all. Uh, I'm really, really sorry. Let's change the topic. The implied threat of that statement is if we keep talking about the topic, I'm just going to start calling people idiots. <laughs> Goddamn liberals. You can't stop about someone's feelings were hurt. All right. Um, what are we doing? I think a spearman here makes sense. Sure. Just put something in front of the radiator to divert, divert the heat. This Mr. Gadget over here. All right, so we are. Gonna kill with this archer. That way, the or oh, the warrior can move forward. This archer is gonna shoot the city. This archer is gonna step back and promote. This archer is gonna shoot here. This warrior is gonna take up this tile. Dedication wise, I'm just gonna go ahead and take free inquiry. Going great already. Yeah, it's going pretty terribly, actually. <laughs> uh, France attacked us pretty much straight away. So now we have to defend ourselves by completely eradicating her from the map. Uh, as you do in Civ. It's a lot of damage. I'm really, really upset that a slinger got into that city. That was something I was hoping to prevent. Uh, my feelings is the most important thing in the world because my mom says I'm special. True! I want to pillage and promote here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to fortify this unit. And I'm going to cancel the fortification and take the promotion. But I can't do both the pillage, which is unfortunate. So unfortunately, I need more damage on these. Guys, which means I have to do a little bit of unorthodox maneuvering to get the kill. Really? That's twice. It's twice now. Uh, I need money. The reason I need money is to get this iron. Please, God. I need a hundred gold. I need another sixty. Uh need some social skills, bro. I have plenty of social skills. Thank you very much. I am I have the best words in the world. What does fortifying then cancelling do? A great that's actually glad you asked that one because it was actually someone who taught me about this. So um there let's say you have a unit 
that can take a promotion. Let's say this warrior here is the example. So if I take the promotion, it uses up all of the warrior's movement. However, if I fortify, then cancel the fortification, then take the promotion, I get to fortify and promote in the same turn. Because even though I cancel the fortification, the unit is still fortified and any unit attacking him will take a three combat strength or he'll have a three combat strength buff to any unit attacking him. Uh, good evening. No, there's many of us in my game. Start some idiot trying to kill me. Go get a liberal arts degree and raise all your stripper money that sent you to college. Build more units and make peace. Making peace just makes an inferior game. Right now, I'm just getting a little bit of uh, infrastructure because I feel like I'm, I'm good right now. I can't really fit any more units into this front line, so I don't need more units. After these monuments, I might look into getting more archers. Cool, Jan Arnold. That's fine. You're welcome to not be here. If you don't enjoy my content, you're more than welcome to not watch it. There is thousands of creators on YouTube who are deserving of your time and attention and money. Money for potato. Okay. Uh, okay. So I need to kill this. This is annoying. I need to kill this. Thank you. Oh, sorry. I got distracted there. Um, thank you for the $5 super chat. Uh, Jeffrey Ka Kane. Thank you so much. Uh, generally speaking, how do you avoid the situation where the dumbass AI always declares war on you on DD? There isn't really a way to avoid it in the very, very early game. If you spawn this close to an AI, I spawned here. France spawned here. They settled in this direction. There's nothing I can do. They're going to declare war on me. Um, if if they had settled in a different direction, maybe I could do a little bit of diplomacy, open borders, all that stuff. But I didn't have any of that unlocked by the time they declared war on me. So in the very, very early game, there's very little you can do other than have an army ready. <sighs> France looks like becoming a crazy bitch. Yeah, well, that's somewhat true. Uh, okay, so I could remove the rainforest. I'm going to leave the rainforest there. I do want the plantation because I want more gold to be able to get this iron. If I can get this iron, I can go for ironworking, get my immortals. If I can get immortals here, I think I win this war pretty much instantly. I just don't like being caught in these like super early turbo wars. It does not feel good, man. I also really hate it when they get a ranged unit inside their city. Also really bothers me. Arrow storm. Good God. Catapult city over here. Archers. More archers. We need archers to replace our losses. Let's go ahead and improve the chocolate. Take the chocolate to you. Hello. How much gold will you give me? You probably give me like 140-ish. 130-ish, 120-ish, 110-ish, 100-ish. You'll give you 100-ish. Hundred and six gold. Thank you very much. You have just paid for my iron. We've got 11 turns on this. We don't, we're not in a rush to save it. Hmm. Might just do something like this, a bit of a defensive formation. Might pull this warrior back until I have my immortals in a couple turns. These catapults are hitting me. I very much so do not like it. Bananas online. Do you need to move your governor to prevent the uprising in your captured city? No, uh, I'm at no risk of this city rebelling because all I have to do is plop a unit in it, in it and it'll be fine. Uh, potato, sell the iron for more money. 
Uh, no, we will not be selling the iron for more money, Isaac, because we actually need the iron for our immortals. You can see here they require 10 iron each to produce an upgrade. And so we'll be keeping that iron for ourselves. Potato, what happened? Are you all right? I miss your content. Nothing happened. I've just been like a busy, crazy time of the year, man. It's hard to make as much content as I would like at this time of year. Okay, so I'll be really, really sad if a catapult gets inside the city. We are going to go ahead and take... I really don't like taking Oligarchy, but I think it is the correct move here. So we're going to go ahead and grab Oligarchy, plug in Strategos and Charismatic Leader. We didn't lose the stream. I was talking to uh, somebody off stream there. Uh, is this our policy agenda? Okay. Okay, we want a GOG. We want urban planning. We want... I really don't like Charismatic Leader. I'll take Strategos. Right, that's all good. It's not frozen. I, lit I just muted the stream to talk to someone. Okay. Why is it so uh, hard to beat a town with a chariot garrisoned? Um, because it's not the chariot, it's the catapult. If the catapult gets into the city, it does a lot of damage. And it will never walk out of the city. And it just, it just makes it really hard to take cities when the AI has them garrisoned, right? Um, it's like a very, I don't know, it's just like... The difference between taking a city without a garrison and a city with a garrison is just like, I don't know, it just feels really obvious to me. I don't know how to explain it. It's like every turn there's a unit shooting out, taking 50% of the health off one of your units. I haven't, I didn't have the time this game to build up a tech lead, so I'm fighting a, a person with superior technology. So that's already hard enough, right? You thought, you thought we melted? Let it go? Is this frozen? You can't do that. Uh, maybe I did melt. Chariot increases the combat strength of the town. Leave for three seconds, everyone loses their minds. I'm glad you're back. Stream froze for a bit. Stream did not freeze. <laughs> uh, if anything, it melted. Someone was getting their tater peeled. Uh, that's kind of a weird comment, but okay. That's how you want to envision what just happened. You're more than uh, welcome to be holding that view. So I'm going to put time into a warrior trader a little bit of infrastructure this guy's working on an archer will improve the mine be able to get work on those soon run away so this is what i don't like i don't like it when there is a catapult in the city we can kill this catapult though pretty easily i think What are we on? Four times now? A unit has escaped on one HP. Nice. Didn't catch a big in stream. What map type and game uh, size? This is a small map size Pangea. You can always rewind the VOD, by the way, if you're ever curious about something you want to check. And, oh, and if I don't know the answer to your question, you want to go back and have a look, you can do so. Okay. Um, I really need a government plaza. And I do need to burn four turns before I can build a um, 
immortal. So we shall do that. So if you're wondering why it's so difficult, it's because every turn this guy is going to be taking half the health off one of my archers uh, that he shoots out. Like this. Half health of my archer. Gone. Instantly. Okay. You are dead. You're going to have to retreat next turn unless you take a double shot, which you probably won't. Uh, military training. Why does Ray have tiles with four faith? Yes, my pantheon is um, Earth Goddess, which gives me um, plus two faith on tiles with a high enough appeal. This is Ray near Uluru, so it does really well. Hey, King's Blood, you versus Brit, make it happen. I mean, if you guys want it to happen, it has to be up to you. You got to pressure Brit into it. So again, Archie gets hit again. Feels bad. Everything has its limit. So there's the Immortal. I can't make one until I have 10. So in two turns, I'll start making one in my capital. This guy just took an absolutely devastating hit. We'll swap him there. You're going to just have to fall back to heal. The one upside here is that we're starting to get experience on our archers. So now I think we will head to the wheel to pick up engineering, maybe get a catapult or two. Very annoying. She's still ahead of me in science. Wait, who is the city directly south of Passagade? I believe that is... Um, the Ottomans who I am friends with. So I'm going to step back here in the hopes that this catapult comes out of the city. If the catapult comes out of the city, I can kill it, which will make me a happy boy. I will be a happy camper, as they say in the vernacular. Vernacular? Spearman, get... Um, bum, 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 bum. Another builder. Will you go for a religion? It is way too late in the game to go for a religion. Um, past turn 20, if you haven't started the machinations of getting a religion, you're not getting one on deity difficulty. Um, I would have liked to really go for a religion with all this faith that I had. Um, and the fact that I wanted to do a culture game this game. But unfortunately, just with the circumstances of getting war declared on me, having no room to expand, this is going to have to be a domination game where I skip a religion. Uh, the spiffing Brit keeps finding new cheesy exploits to use. I think you'll find, actually, that I was the one who told him about that exploit. <coughs> he specifically said so in his video. Wink, wink. Yeah, I probably should pillage the campus in Tulu. It's actually a good move. Good call, chat. Okay, so important thing happened. The enemy catapult stepped out of the city, but there's a new one. Damn it. Maybe this one won't step in. Hopefully it doesn't. I would really like it if it didn't. Okay, we can get to work on an immortal now. Governor title. We will take the connoisseur promotion. Because we need as much culture and science as possible on as few cities as possible right now. Will the faith ever be useful to me? The faith will be useful to me once I unlock either monarchy, theocracy or merchant republic. And get the government plaza building. I can't remember what it's called. Government plaza building. It is the Grand Master's Chapel which allows me to buy land units with faith. And then the faith will be useful to me. I can also use it to purchase some great people. Like for example, I might use it to purchase Boudicca here because it doesn't look like anyone has built any encampments. So getting a really quote, quote unquote early um, great general here could be of great use. In fact, I'm also almost tempted to do an encampment here. As much as I don't want to spend that kind of gold. If I can get an encampment, it would be good. All right, I have a builder here, but a builder charge, but I don't have anything I really want to do with this builder charge.
Ah. Uh, so aggravating. So, 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 so aggravating. Waiting for the immortal. Who is better, Aztec or Mongolia? It depends on the kind of game you want to play. Um, I would say generally the Aztec is better because their unique unit comes online way earlier. But I would say overall, Mongolia has way better bonuses. Why is there no sound effects? Your Majesty. Kill this and run away. Hopefully we can bait him forward. This is what I really don't like, getting caught into a war early. What I really like is an opportunity to grow my science a bit before I get into war. Because when I'm behind on tech, there is no attacking an enemy city without taking crazy losses. Pillage? We pillaged it. We pillaged the campus. It was, good, it was, good, it was a good backseat game. Stop the movement of the spearman. You accidentally moved him forward. He's not moving. Britain is my home. Check the worked tiles of Ray. Doesn't. Uh, oh, I can actually change this. Brilliant. You will grow. Problem is the place needs a granary. That's the reason it's not really growing. Okay. Uh, military training. This gives me encampment construction as well as getting extra iron. We can get an immortal, another one soon. Hundred and thirty gold to upgrade you plus iron. So I'm putting all my trade routes in Ray because I need to make this city as strong as possible if I'm ever going to have a chance of getting Petra there. Uh, it is my name, not my full one, though. I'm pretty sure descent of an old Scottish noble family told by my friend. Okay, Ancestral Hall. I think we go for Warlord's Throne here. Unfortunately, I have to just go for Immortals. So we have our very first Immortal. Immortals are not very good. I just want to be clear on that. By my tea. By my tea. Need more gold to be able to upgrade these guys into immortals and stuff. Okay, so good news. They have moved forward. Bad news. I don't have enough damage to kill them all. <laughs> I got to be very selective about what I kill and shoot here. So what I'm going to do here is this is a very small micro micro uh, adjustment. This unit has the garrison promotion. This unit does not. I'm going to swap them. This way I did an extra 10 damage this turn from this unit. And I will shoot like this. I'm going to emphasize on getting things fully killed. I'm also going to sacrifice my spearmen. Because I would rather keep my archers alive. Canada is close. Pretty much everyone is close. I have no room to breed this game. Um, which is very, very unfortunate because it's very hard to play a game like this where you have no room to breathe. Sure, take it. It's fine. Okay, I'm really sad about that. I was really hoping that my spearmen would bait them into attacking him. Unfortunately, my archer was standing on floodplains, which means it takes a damage bonus, which sucks. It is what it is. There's nothing you can do about it. I'm going to have you step back to take your promotion. 
Really? That's not a kill? Two more iron. Come here, pillage that. If it's natural to kill. Then you are going to swap with this guy, take your promotion, you're going to step forward, you're going to step forward. You are going to kill that. Pillage there for science. Immortals are almost here to be useless. Second immortal online. I don't have horses, do I? I do. I'm actually getting them from the city-state, so I could go for horsemen here. Bobby Tedder going now. Catch you later if you're still streaming. See you later, Artie boy. Immortals save the day. Uh, doubtful that they will save the day, but we'll do our best. So I think I'm just going to have to brute force my way through the city as much as I don't want to do that. As much as it's not really a feasible thing to do. More immortals. This is why I don't like it when there's a catapult inside the city. Thankfully, I have very tanky units coming up. City will be surrounded soon. Another immortal coming. You have finished your granary, allowing you to grow a little bit more. Should really unlock the pyramids if I'm going to go for those. Um, and in the meantime, you'll grab me a catapult. Took a big chunk of damage on this archer. I don't like that. We have the city surrounded. Come out with your hands up. So now any damage we do to the city will not be erased, which makes me way more confident in attacking in melee with my units with like my spearmen, for example. 11 turns until that goes bad. That's fine. Feudalism. I want feudalism for sure. Now I'm going to pick up Victor, pop him in Ambois. Set up a domination uh, game with the military bypass. Go straight for Paris. Set up a defense behind. Um, you want me to walk my squishy units past the catapult? Uh, I don't think that makes sense. So I want to prioritize getting experience on who? I want you to be healthy to become an immortal in the next couple of turns. I want my immortals to have a bit of experience. So I'm going to capture the city with my spearmen. That way, this guy can instantly move Victor to here. You'll become an immortal instantly and will start pushing up towards Paris. If he has walls in Paris, my life has become hell. If you afford to send Canada gifts, you should so they don't get pissed and join the war. Uh, I think I've just thrown diplomacy out the window at this point, and I'm going full murder. <laughs> the AI has been unkind to me today, and so I will eradicate everything they believe in. <clears throat> so, now that we have won the war, I know that's a bit of a premature declaration, but uh, I'm pretty confident that... Yeah, uh, Why? Every time... <laughs> Kill me.
me now! So we can't win this war anymore. <laughs> not with a crossbow, not, not, not against a crossbowman. Not until we get a tech at lead. Um, we could maybe do a surprise war. Other options. Tech hard. <laughs> bait him out? He, you know, I guess I could bait him out. But the problem is just killing him is going to be a pain in the ass. I need to have my own crossbowman to take the city. So it's worth, the, it's worth it to peace out for 10 turns, right? So here's my logic what I'm doing. I'm peacing out for 10 turns. In 10 turns, I can declare a surprise war. Shabam. Surprise war. I get all the benefits of my surprise war and I can get my units in position, right? In the meantime. So I I, I can still win the war, just not right now. I had this like a... Th Wait, why? Happiness minus five? Jesus Christ. Maybe I shouldn't have sold all my luxuries. I need a luxury, I need a luxury, I need a luxury. In 14 turns, I need a luxury. Nothing I can do. Except reassign Victor to that city. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to move these guys around. Really don't want to move Pingala right now. It's going to slow down my machinery acquisition. Jesus. Unfortunately necessary. Just to hold on to these cities. The good news is this is an opportunity for me to do... A bit of tacking. And stuff like that. Warlord's Throne get... Slightly longer piece than I would like. T by Pass Argade. Yeah, I could get the T online. Um but I need a builder, so I'm just I'm just gonna sacrifice how soon I get to war and hope for the best. Faith is a giant waste. Well I can use it for a great military unit, right? Or I can save it up for Isildur of Miletus. Chop forest to increase. You mean rainforest? Um, no, it's fine. We have it stabilized. We, we're we're stable right now. Once we get this monument built, this city should be stable as well. Once our war weariness, I think we have uh, no war weariness. We just sold all our luxuries, which is what's hurting us right now because I never got a chance to build up my cities. Pretty much got one settler out, and then was immediately in a death war. As long as she doesn't get walls in there, I'll be pretty happy. Dies west of Toulouse. The problem the problem isn't that I don't have luxuries I can get online. The problem is I don't have a builder that I can get in a reasonable amount of time to affect it. So I had to I had to move a governor to deal with it. Hey, Urion. Oh my God, Urion. I don't know how to say your name. I see the fada. I have no idea how to pronounce it. Right, there's machinery. The good news is in here we'll be able to build a library after this encampment. Thank you for the $1 super chat poop emoji. I appreciate it. Uh, plus one dies west. You should still be friends with the Ottomans while you still can. Mm. Tempted to go to war with them soon. I think I'm going to hold on that one. So I need gold and infrastructure. Repair that campus for the science. Yep, 
Yeah, no, I, I have luxuries that I can get online. The problem is getting a builder in time to, to change things, right? Um, and I, I can't get a builder in time to change things. So I'm just like, just going to move my governors around, slightly hurt my game a little bit, but not have to sidetrack for a builder and I can work on critical infrastructure. The second we have, the, basically the turn, so let's start getting units in position. Um, basically the same turn that we get um, crossbow tech, we're going to be declaring war. That's why I'm trying to save cash right now. Mutual open borders. You want to buy my iron? Deal. Troops are merely passing by. At least until I have machinery. Almost have feudalism, which will let me do this. Once I have mercenaries, I'll be able to upgrade my units at half price. Do I delay till mercenaries? I think delaying till mercenaries is a little bit too much. Although it would let me upgrade twice as many units. Uh, I still also do not have currency unlocked, which is painful. You could attack Canada while they're still weak. I could, but he has more tech than me. And I want to commit to the France kill. Um, because if I bring my army away from here, France might backstab me. And then I'm just, you know, up shit's creek without a paddle. Uh, let's pop that in right there. Working on the pyramids. Hopefully we get it. So I need tech to catch up in this game. Troops approaching bottom right. That's from uh, the Ottomans. It's fine. I can just, like, eh, friendship. Like, um, now he can't declare war on me, right? So I'm under no threat from the Ottomans. In democracy, it's your vote that counts. In feudalism, it's your... There's feudalism. Plug in feudal contract. Confirm. There's Sun Tzu. He provides bonuses to all of these units. Do I wait till mercenaries before I attack? It lets me get twice as many crossbowmen for my gold. She's denouncing me. That's fine. If I wait too long, though, she might declare war on me, which I really don't want. I need this catapult to be in range of the general. I'm not going to sell you strategics. Not for gold per term, not when I'm planning on declaring war on you. Remember that people... 250 gold or wait five turns and spend 125 gold. I think we just take the crossbowman now and declare war next turn. And hope that that works. Every turn I delay is painful. Loyalty from Victor. Don't wait, you might get walls. Yeah, exactly. So I'll declare war next turn whenever unit is ready. Okay, so she has a small token army. She has crossbowmen in position. A lot of crossbowmen in position. Good. God. A lot of these units are going to die next turn. Nothing I can do about it. Just depressing. The AI gets so many bonuses to build units that she's able to just crank out a ridiculous number. The one saving grace I have is that my units are really, really fast and do a lot of damage.
you have enough promotions to survive, I think. It's a hard knock life, boys. I might lose another unit this turn. It's okay if I do. Of course. Can't even attack there. Alright, we got the kill. Now we have to try to burn this city down before this one crossbowman kills my entire army. That sounds like I'm joking. <laughs> but I am not. Sacrificing these crappy units so my good units can stay alive. So unfortunately, I just have to throw everything at this city. And hope that I can bring it down before she kills my army. Free inquiry is fine. Yep. Just lost a level 3 archer there. This is this is this is this is actually one of my least favorite kind of games. Um, is when the AI declares war on you from the start. I would much rather just restart this kind of game. But I, I don't even have time to pick up promotions here in these units. I just need to grind this city to dust. She, please tell me she only has one city left, right? Can't tell. Extra mine production from industrialization. We have mercenaries, so we can plug that card in if we need. We have enough faith. Let's go for a tier 2 government. How do you not have siege status? She has Victor. Oh, God damn it. She has Victor established inside the city, which means the city cannot be put under siege. All right, so I had to throw away a huge chunk of my army here just to beat, just to win this war. Like I said, that doesn't feel good ever. I also need to get my gold income up. I need builders. I need everything. Should use melee attack now. Um, I don't want to use melee attack because I don't want to give her more kills than I need to. I didn't mean to pillage there. That was a mistake. But now that the city is about to die, that wasn't her last city. Wow, okay. Where is her last city? That's obnoxious. Now everyone in the world hates me. It's to be expected. I don't know where she ever found time to make another city because she has literally been at war with me since like one of the very earliest turns in the game. Commando for movement. <clears throat> okay. Next. Crossy online. Tech wise. We're next likely target. We're probably going to have to fight the Ottomans. There's a plus three campus right here. I want to chop that forest first. 
So I'll get a builder first. Sure thing you can buy my iron. I don't need it anymore. Alright, great. She has a city down south. I don't see one over here. Plunder that trade route. Come to here. Promote. Amphibious. Tortoise. Put one into Kabul. I'm going to use this crossbowman to scout the Ottomans a little bit. Great general move to here. Uh, let's see, is the range attack affected by battle cry? I believe it is. Fighting the Ottomans when the Renaissance era is on the horizon sounds like a terrifying prospect. What other options do I have? Let's be realistic here. Amphibious is pretty terrible, but it does lead us to urban warfare. Which will be useful against the Ottomans, because I expect we will be fighting in a lot of districts in that fight. Another city that I can't siege because it's next to water, and apparently can't siege the city because it's attached to a lake. Very cool. Okay. Do we have room for cities, like settlements? Because maybe I could settle a couple of cities here and kind of build up a bit of extra power that way. All right, attacking the Ottomans is going to be the definition of actual pain. She had all this room to expand. I don't know why she decided to expand towards me. Just is what it is, man. Take that city next turn. Builder in the capital. Harvest. Boom. Campus. Gold. Boom. Five turns until that campus. Oh my god. Attacking the Ottomans has got to be the worst thing in the world. There's not, there's not even a land route here. Maybe I can attack him from here, but he's got an encampment there. Good god. This is going to be the most awful domination game I've ever played. Could you see you by embarking? Yeah, but then your units, embarked units take uh, a huge amount more damage. The good news is we did get the pyramids. Which uh, potentially leads us into just having better builders in, vet in general. And also swinging in for mathematics. Okay, uh, talking about what we want to do in here. I think the Petra is going to go there. You are going to work on another builder to help out my other cities although you could get a settler in a reasonable number of turns all right let's have a look at the capital right we've been severely neglecting actually upgrading our cities now that we're about to get apprenticeship it makes sense to start chopping in here and placing down mines for the inevitable thing why can't you convert to culture you have room to expand i really don't um, in order to win a culture game, so here, here's a big problem. Uh, in order to win a culture game, I need to be significantly ahead in culture. <clears throat> uh, I'm I'm not, and you need a lot more room. I don't have enough room, so this is like 100% a domination game. As far as I can tell from my... I, I, I mean, I could probably win a culture game in this position, but I don't know who the final sieve is, I think. Yeah, I don't know who the final sieve is, and I don't know what sieve that is. And I don't know how well they're doing. So going for a culture game right now and then discovering, oh, this guy has like 400 culture and you'll never beat him with the size of an empire. And then I have to switch back to a domination game would just be devastating. Okay. So that is you dead. Ottomans. Let me get the last little bit of scouting information. So genuinely think Bursa is my best angle of attack. The Ottoman, well, good God. Good, freakish, immortal god of everything. Yeah, I'm going to have to fight the Ottomans. Nothing I can do. No two ways about it. i got to fight the Ottomans with a pitiful army. Against these horrifically strong cities.
How are you still getting yields on the Tower of Pyramids? It's just a uh, visual bug. I'm not actually getting yields on it. It's just a visual bug. See, it's just like... If I reload the game, like if I quickly save... No, that's my autosave! Ah! Cancel! Alt F4. Click, click. Right, we avoided... I don't know if we actually stopped anything meaningful happening. We don't talk about what just happened. <laughs> we don't talk about what just happened, okay? Load Cyrus. cities of stone and seen early empires rise and fall soon you will stand under the towering pinnacles of castles alongside your gallant knights that is where the story of your people will be written just as the younger friend this entire game looks like hell welcome to playing civilization six kids your place in this world claim the crown cyrus king of persia all right so moving on, like nothing happened. Um, what was I doing? Oh yeah, the yields. So like, it, it's just it's just a visual bug that sometimes happens with the UI mod that I use. It's uh, it has something to do with like mousing over a city when the yield changes or whatever the end turn transition. Mm, 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 mm. There's apprenticeship right on cue. Jesus. What I might do. I can't even declare war on him for a while anyway. 14 turns. Do I wait 14 turns or do I just go kill Canada? Kill Canada! We'll come back for you, Ottomans. Canada's army is weak and ripe for the picking. Chop. Start the Petra. I need to unlock it first. Shump. Two turns until I get it. There's some pretty teeth grindingly infuriating things. I agree. But I mean, I guess you kind of have to take the good with the bad, right? I mean, I guess that's kind of like just with everything. You have to kind of accept that sometimes things aren't going to go your way. And it's going to feel bad. And you got to just power through and learn to deal with it. <clears throat> good life advice, too. Um, do we have... We do not have lumber mills. I would like lumber mills. Yield icons. With their hockey hula blue and that bitch Anne Murray. Uh, can you change government and upgrade the arch? You can change government and upgrade the arch in one turn. Yep. I could change it right now, like for example. But uh, I'm not making any units, so what I'm gonna do here is swap out urban planning. Let's do a quick switch here. Urban planning for colonization for the extra couple of cities we're picking up. We are also gonna plug in professional army. I think I'm gonna keep strategos. For now, I'm going to take Merchant Confederation for the little bit of extra gold, because my gold is really, really weak right now. Problem is, I'm going to be going up against Wilfred Laurier, who has Suzerainty of Kabul, which I do not like. I would like to be Suzerain of Kabul. Um, we'll have to just kind of hope on that front if we can get enough envoys. I am competitive. I, I'm in a competitive position now to win a science or domination game, I feel. Can't do religion. You take the good, you take the bad, you take the boat, you have the facts of life. The facts of life. 
Uh, the Petra, your great Petra wonder. Have Petra Petra. What if I were to build a one tile Petra just to make chat mad? I'd do it. I'll do it. Ooh, excuse me. But better to sit back and tech up a build infrastructure, have a bigger army than to go to war right away. That'll play much safe, so please forgive me. Uh, so in the end, it kind of ends up being the same. Uh, so I'll talk about that really, really quick. Um, there's this concept of timing windows. <clears throat> right now, uh, Canada has a significant technology lead upon me, right? They have four techs ahead of me and they're making 20 more science per turn. So right now there is a window where they are stronger than me, but not a lot stronger than me. I could sit back for like 60 turns and out tech them most likely, but it would take 60 turns. Or I can push them now, cripple them, take a city or two, and then reassess if I want to piece them out while also settling two extra cities, right? So. By doing this timing, this, this opportunity window is open for me. And then I can also follow this up by picking up education to get extra tech and kind of also do that as a follow-up, right? So there's like these windows of opportunity that you have to learn to exploit. Those poor horses and cows in the drought agree. So basically what we're doing is we're taking advantage of a timing window in which Canada is stronger than us, but not a lot stronger than us. We have about equal military, but I'm banking on me being just better at the game than Canada uh, to carry me, um, which is a dangerous thing to do because the AI can surprise you sometimes. Rarely, but still. You can pre-fire Adana with two catapults in the future perspective. Pre-fire a Dani with two catapults. Yes. Without mathematic. It's true. God damn encampment was killed. Feels bad, man. Need the granary and watermill in here. Settler completed. Let's get to work on... Our next big tech is going to be Niter. We're making decent science. The one tile Petra. Woo! I could piss people off. Let's go. Let's just spam a few extra immortals because they'll potentially be useful this war. They're tanky and they're ranged. They, they can do damage like a bad archer and take damage like a warrior. So they kind of end up just being okay. 125 gold for a crossy. Another settler coming out here. We'll get started on the Petra once that's done. I do not have a whole... Well, I do, actually. And this is actually going to be really, really helpful. This is Hildegard of Bingen that gives your science as holy side adjacency. That's really, really useful, actually, um, in this particular game. I'm going to appoint Liang in Bordeaux. Bordeaux is going to build ancient walls and then spam builders for me to improve the rest of my cities. You have the governor title for a new city? Yes. I, I typically either... If I'm sitting on a governor title, it's because I haven't thought of a good use for it, or I have, I've forgotten. So this Toronto city kind of poops on my plans a little bit. I can still do... kind of what I wanted. I wanted to settle a city here to get advantage of this and stuff, but we'll just have to do a little bit of a weirdness right now. 
to have a peek. So he's only got swordsman. I'm going to need to start building more units now. I've kind of delayed actually too much. I can't afford to do anything else anymore. Crossbowman. I need to switch my government ASAP. I don't want to pay gold for that because my gold is very limited right now. Extra science here puts us back a little bit more towards him. We're up to 47 to 67. So he's still taking faster than us. But I'm hoping that I'll be able to get the drop on him and maybe capture a city and use that as a base of operations. I'm probably going to wait until my settlers are in position. Um, because that'll get me closer to exploration. We have a barracks in here. God, I want to build these buildings. I really, really need them. Horsemen would be a good follow-up, I think. They're cheap. They're relatively strong. They're a little bit under tech right now, but they do use a strategic resource that I have a lot of that I haven't used yet. Uh, speaking of strategic resources, let's go ahead and talk to King Solomon over here. Do you want to buy three horses off me? Thank you. How many great general points do you have to purchase another great general? Uh, I was more thinking of saving up for Isidore of Miletus to get Petra really, really fast. I could purchase this, but I already have. Denounce Canada, you can't surprise Warden. Thank you for the reminder. I always forget that thing about Canada. Uh, so I have to denounce Canada, unfortunately. Uh, do, 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 do. What was I doing? We were talking about something else. How many great general points? Uh, right now, none of my units are of the next era, so I don't need one. I don't have any Renaissance era units just yet, so I don't need another um, great general, because this guy covers, if I recall correctly, the classical and medieval era, which is all of my units. So I don't need another great general. Good call, Gabrielle Taylor. <clears throat> Good call. The best kind of back backseat gaming is like catching me on stuff I forget. He doesn't need to denounce them yet. Uh, well, I do plan to declare the war in the next few turns, so it was a good time to call it. Because I, I had genuinely completely forgotten about it. That I had to denounce first. Alright, so I do need gold. Uh, do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. I'm going to trade with Paris to hopefully get more roads in my empire. So Sparta. I'm just going to focus on getting the city built up growth-wise. You kind of had a lot of room to go. At what point do you stop settling for a tourism victory? Uh, when you run out of room. Apologies, I will look elsewhere. I already have grievances with him, so I'm just going to take his Diplo favor because I can sell it to the Ottomans. Thank you. 21 gold per turn is pretty damn good. I need to find the last save. I'm not worried about that right now. I could take a card. Would mean I don't need battering rams. He doesn't have walls up yet. He's not working on walls. I'm going to hold on to these envoys for now. Let's take a moment to step back so we don't spook him. Monument Granary Watermill. When can we declare war? Two turns. We don't get the surprise war benefits, which sucks. Nothing we can do about it, though. Uh, the Virgin, all roads lead to Rome, versus the Chad Satrapies. Skirmisher. There's a skirmisher running around here. I'm not too worried about that. It'll be annoying. I Maybe I should leave these two units down here to deal with it. So he's moving his army over. He knows war is coming. Vote no. Awesome. Brilliant. Two turns until war. Immortals. So I'm just going to spam Immortals out of here as a cheap sort of frontline support unit. 
So you can see he only has swordsman and crossbowmen. He has a lot of them. But it's all he has. It is the mark of an My troops are merely passing by. As we can... The hardest thing is going to be defending Ray. He has knights. Uh oh. So we're going to be playing mostly defensive here. Shoot, I should have had a unit in position here. Playing mostly defensive for the opening uh, steps of the war. And then we'll push in. You took a heavy hit, that's okay. There's exploration. We can switch to Merchant Republic. Beautiful. Uh, we can plug in Oligarchy to get our melee combat strength up. We are also going to be plugging in Serfdom. I really, really, really want to have Conscription plugged in. Over Professional Army for now. I really want Caravanseries for the extra gold. So I think we're in pretty good shape with this setup right now. Good gold per turn. Step you back, step you to here, take over that hill, or that marsh rather, and hammer the hell out of that knight to get him off the board. We're in a good defensive line. I need to protect Ray is my biggest thing. I'm hoping to bait this swordsman over to my crossbowman who will retreat into the hills. This crossbowman's in position to help fight this guy. Hopefully my spearman baits the skirmisher forward. <clears throat> so there's mercenaries. The next major military tech is nationalism. We would maybe like to pick up Divine Right. I would really... Do I want alliances? If I could get a military alliance with the Ottomans, I'd actually be really happy. Like I could kill them last. What victory are you going for? Domination currently. Okay, so he went straight for Ray, which is what I was hoping he wouldn't do. We got the first shot on that guy. And we have a horseman to control him. Apparently I can't shoot over the geothermal because it's on a hill. Oligarchic Legacy is real good, by the way, with the Immortal unit. Get onto the hill. Okay, we got a Horseman in here. I'm going to get another Horseman. It's good to have a... I feel like it's good usually to go for a single unit Doctrine, because it's way easier to tech for a single unit. But I think having a mixture of units with different abilities is sometimes really useful, mainly because they use different strategic resources. So your army is less single strategic resource dependent. Okay. <clears throat> so having a look at his army strength, we have significantly cut him down to size. You're going to step to here. We're going to start shifting our army to the right. Vancouver unfortunately got walls. Which means I do want to have control of Akkad if I can when I eventually attack Vancouver. I might have to wait till Bombards to break it. I can break Toronto first. Um, get rid of that unit. You come to here. Trade with... I think I might trade with Sparta. Oh, I don't want to trade with Sparta because this guy will step forward and murder me. Um, maybe I'll trade with Pasargade again. Okay, let's, let's pre-build a couple of catapults for the thing. As much as I want to get these things online. Oh, right. I'm going to purchase Isidore of Miletus to get the Petra faster. Because that'll turn Ray into a superpower city. When are you usually live? Uh, it's, it's whenever I have time and motivation to stream. I don't have anything set in stone right now.
Urban Warfare. You have a promotion. You're coming up. All right, so we're working on grinding through his army. Taking Vancouver is going to be hard. But we might be able to chip the city away. Stand there. Petra. So we cut the Petra down to seven turns, and we can save this other build charge for the Mausoleum of Halakarnassus, ideally. It's take two turns to get Celestial Navigation. Mausoleum is a really powerful wonder. It's one of my favorites. War. Who? What is it good for? I'm a Sagittarius and risk it. I've lived through some terrible things in my life. Campus adjacency. I might want to plug in campus adjacency. It's a lot of science in a game where I'm not ahead on science. All right, we are doing the damage. You have a promotion. All right, we've got a double attacking crossbowman. We're going to want to keep him alive. We'll get the mausoleum right here as well. I'm going to hold on to my governor title. I don't have anything I really want. Although I might move Pingala back to my capital now at this point. It's safe to do so, and I'll only lose a little bit of science out of it. But I'll gain it back over time. Take the battle cry promotion. Got an enemy crossbowman. We can kill it. There's no one garrisoning Vancouver. That was a dangerous move to make. I just did there in case there was a garrison. So you can see how I was talking about that timing window where he has more science than us, but his army isn't that much stronger than us. So we can use our superior intellect. I guess, if you want to call it that. Our, 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 our skill to overcome the fact that he has a science advantage. What kind of walls are in here? All right, he's got medieval walls in Vancouver. Which is a bit of a problem because I don't have a way to break those uh, really quickly. I'm going to have to grind them down. Let's make sure we kill as many units and stuff. Get as much experience on our units. You have a promotion, Garrison. You're going to finish the city. Okay, we've taken over Toronto. Let's go ahead and grab Victor. Reassign him to this new city because he'll provide loyalty AoE. Might want to make friends with the elements that ended again. Uh, he might not want friends anymore because I've been pissing off everyone else. What we can do is maybe get him into my war and send him a gift. That might tip him over the edge into being friendly again. What, um, get a monument online? You just want to repair infrastructure first, in my opinion. Repair the amphitheater. Good, good, good. Get a card, it beats his walls. The thing I'm worried about a card is, will somebody steal it back from me? So if I was to do that, I'd like to have thing. Um, and I don't really... And the other reason is, every time I attack his walls with a unit, I lose half their health. So I'd much rather just grind their walls down with my units at range. So that's the current working plan. Get out of here. So hopefully that explains the kind of logic of the way that I'm doing things. Uh, does the plus four loyalty of Victor affect the city where he is placed? I don't believe so. Um, Granary. I want the university for science so I can get ahead technologically. Currently just on par. Same reasoning here. Alright. 
<clears throat> Vancouver is going to be a tough nut to crack. Since we can only do tiny clumps of damage every turn. But every time we do damage to the city, every subsequent piece of damage goes further. Uh, it's just the way the fortification system works. We could also maybe run cavalry around and pillage some of these districts. We do have a catapult online. That will eventually become a bombard. Let's get... I could get the university. How far am I from bombards? I'm quite a wi w w ways away from bombards. But I'd like to have the two to three catapults made and ready to upgrade. Science. Hardcore tech mode. What speed is this? This is normal game speed. Whatever standard is, is what we're playing at. Cleopatra is weak right now, exciting for when you attack her. I don't know where she is, is the problem. Um, but she, she'll be an easy kill. Sometimes it's better to go for the harder kill because you eliminate competition. Ah... Petra is a brilliant display. Okay, there's Petra. The Beautiful. The city is now amazing. We're going to go ahead and build a harbor in here. So that we can go for the mausoleum as well. City is now redonkulous. Really struggling early game for science. Help her. Uh, really, a lot of early game science comes from things like uh, boosts doing these um eurekas and um getting pingala online with the researcher promotion in a city with a relatively high population and then also just settling a bunch of cities because each city has a baseline amount of science they produce based on the number of population in it. you get half a, you get half a science per population so if you just settle a bunch of cities that's a way to get science in the early game uh, you can maybe throw down two to three campuses early game if you really have time for that solomon is friendly with me King Solomon. Uh, I'm going to declare friendship with him. That'll give me 30 turns where he won't attack me. Unless it's an emergency. There's a good theater square in the mausoleum spot. Um, there is. However, I am not going for a culture victory. And I have plenty of culture coming from these tiles. I can't get a military alliance with him yet. However, once I have civil service, I will be using him for his combat strength boost. Um... Okay, that's a lot of damage that I can't afford to take. So I can't occupy any of these tile any of these tiles over here, but I can kind of just very calmly poke forward here. And carefully navigate towards his doom. Thank you so much, Sam Hill, for the £2 donation twice. I really appreciate that. They need a better governor for domination victory. I agree. The yields of the city will be insane when we're done with it. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Coursers for better horsemen. Thank you so much, Sam Hill, again, for your diddly donation. Idly, idly, doodly do. Do they need a better governor for Dombic? Um, I think there's plenty of interesting choices for when you're going for a domination victory, with regards to governor titles. Um, there could be maybe there could always be better. I, I, I like you know there could always be better. <clears throat> Whether there needs to be, I'm not sure. Did you unlock your? I did not adjust my lock tiles. Thanks for reminding me. I'm gonna vote for city center. And I will say unit production is half price. Okay, unit production is half price. Shit's about to get real. Um, we're about to get flooded by units from Canada. Uh, so we need to be ready for that.
this unit took too much damage. I don't want to lose a four promoted crossbowman. We are grinding the city down, which is exactly what we want to be doing at this stage of the game. Just grinding. Grinding. Um, there is civil service. Let us talk to the Ottomans. We will get ourselves a military alliance. He'll make me pay him a bit of gold. Should have done that at the start of this turn. I would have got the plus five combat strength. He's also at war with Canada. The benefit of the military alliance is we get five combat strength against units of the player we are at war with. Governor promotion. I've been sitting on this governor promotion for a while. I have nothing I want to do with it. Uh, if we look through our options, we could take Embrasure. Problem is, Victor is in a city where I can't build units. Uh, I don't care about great people points. I don't care about space initiative. I don't care about curator. I don't care about any of these promotions. Uh, I don't care about Amani. I don't need Magnus. I don't need Reyna. Reyna is the one that you can make the most arguments for. However, Reyna is useless with a single governor title. If I was going to invest in Reyna, I would want to have at least three. So right now, I'm just sitting on my governor title until an option appears. How are the Immortals shooting two tiles? They have two tile range. Okay. Uh, we have civil service, guilds, diplomatic service. Let's go ahead and pick up our spy at diplomatic service. I also... Mm, I need to start producing units en masse now that we have cheap units. I need to start switching away from infrastructure production. But I've already started investing, so I'm going to hold on. Morning from Australia. How's it going, Nutty Monkey? All right, the Corsair here is a problem. I might have to step forward. Can you escape? Kill him for me. You have a promotion now. You took a hit. Can't take another one. So we've taken down a total of 75 fortification health here, which is a pretty good start, I would say, on a war. Um, with no siege tech. Uh, deployed. Fisheries and Ray, uh, fisheries only, they don't do much, right? Um, what would they, like, what would they do in Ray? Like, I don't think they would do a whole lot. I don't think I need to update this city's tile working. I think it's fine the way it is. Maybe this is better, but. Let's get the work on some coursers to help out. All right. So we have two crossbowmen here now. This makes my life a nightmare. Because now he can shoot twice from this city. So I'll probably have to wait until I have bombards to really mount an assault. Why well, don't all the heal wins more weight? Game more rolling after France got defeated? A little bit. Alright, so he's splitting his damage, which is good. And he stepped the crossbowman out, which is amazing. Let's me be a lot more aggressive, actually. Two hundred and fifty gold for a courser. I'm gonna wait until I plug in the card that gives me cheaper unit promotion upgrades, whatever. Watching as the trains go to work. 
going to be 45 degrees in Melbourne today. Unbearable. Jesus Christ. You need to move out of that country immediately. Don't they have laws against working in that heat over there? Jesus. All right, so we got a knight out on the wings. Another crossbowman popped out of the city. We need to kill that this turn or we're in trouble. You're going to fall back to heal. You'll step forward, take up the mantle of responsibility. Kill him, get him off the board. Or in the card game community, sweep, as they like to call it. Can't do anything about that, can I? I can maybe attack him once and force him to promote and then kill him next turn. I think the forced promotion is my best move. We got the harbor in here. Mausoleum. Shabam. Bam. Mausoleum in 11 turns. Feels good, man. Horses. Build a trader for road to Toronto. Uh, yeah, if I ever get time. Stop. I think this is the fourth emergency vote against me. If I get time for the trader, I will. I guess I could purchase it. It's not that expensive. It's 300 gold and it'll pay itself off slowly. So the knight retreated to the city. This is actually not a terrible thing. It's not ideal. But it's not the worst outcome that I could hope for. Five defenses. Five health. Five defenses. Six health. So you can see the amount of damage we're doing to the city is slowly going up as we whittle away the city's defenses. Three defenses, four health, five health. Three defenses, five health. Then this guy does three defenses, four health. Combat strength and districts. Heal. Catapults. I will not be deploying the catapults in combat until they are bombards. They get one shot by cities. Unless it's to completely finish the walls off. Then I will consider it. Which actually, with that consideration, it might be worth it to get them in position to see what they can do. If I can get three of them to activate on the same turn. Be in the office better than home. Be 45 at 5 p.m. on the way home. Jesus. Please build a trade route. Already done. We're on the, on the road to Toronto. Yeah, 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 yeah. You denounce me. You dislike me. All right, we've got a Corsair attacking from here. Level 4 crossbowman. He's got a crossbowman in the city. It makes my life way harder. Um, and I don't like it. You need to retreat. You're going to throw that attack to help this guy out. I'm actually going to have you step back a tile to see if I can bait this crossbowman out to attack this horseman. He did it before, hoping he does it again. If I step this catapult forward, he dies. It is that simple. There's no if ands, or buts about it. But I might be able to bait the crossbow out to attack the catapult, which would be okay in my books. Right now, what I'm doing is I'm just trying to get effective damage on Canada while I wait for bombards. Um, if you're wondering what I'm doing, that's pretty much it. I'm just trying to wait for bombards. I see his army size has, like, jumped massively with the passing of that Congress vote. All right, Crossbowman did, in fact, step out, took the bait to attack my catapult, which is an opportunity for this catapult to get some experience, which is an opportunity that is rarely afforded to catapults outside of them dying instantly, horrifyingly, to city walls. So I'm actually pretty happy with that outcome. Take the Tortoise promotion, finish him off, stay fortified. Time to change our government. We're going to pull out conscription. Plug in professional army. Keep all this stuff the way that it is. You're going to become a courser. Slowly grinding through the city. I feel comfortable deploying this catapult. 
Because I don't think he'll get a crossbowman next turn. Because he got one this turn. You dig? Now the turn after that. It's up in the air. I really need to build my for uh, my grandmaster's chapel. I'm curious, actually. We'll we'll test that next turn. Can you make some videos about mid game, late game power spike tech civics? A lot of uh, civ vids about early game stuff, but no one really goes into what the big things to aim for later. Um, I think th those things are just inherently less useful because if you have a really good early game, they matter less. No, you don't get my luxuries. You can get fucked. So there's another crossbowman being deployed. Um, I think this is where... I sacrifice some health to maybe try to kill this before it gets into the city. Shit. And then I can deploy both of my catapults on the front line this turn and get some extra city wall damage. I might lose a catapult here, but I'm okay with that if it speeds up the city capture by a turn. Because units are half price right now. And if units are half price, that means I'll be able to purchase them for half price once I get Grandmaster's Chapel. <clears throat> Catapults are too squishy. I feel like they should be more resilient to ranged attacks and weaker to melee defense. Um... Yeah, they definitely... F I think catapults are in like a... Just, I think the catapult is the only siege line that's in a bad place. Personally speaking, just because crossbowmen destroy them completely. God damn it. Like, a, he's getting a crossbowman every turn, it feels like. But we do have a golden age, which is going to help with our warp. Mainly in the form of loyalty. Um, <laughs> monumentality. Shoot the city. This crossbowman is a problem. He will be dealt with. With this crossbowman next turn. Alright, we have all the basic infrastructure in here. The most important thing is to get our gold income up, I think. We now have control of the city. It is under siege. It will not recover health and we can take it over. So it was a lot of work to take that city over, but just slow patience. We lost a couple of units. But in the end, it worked out. Okay. You are in position to retreat. You're stepping forward to kill this guy. That was your job. You're retreating away from this encampment so you don't get killed by it. You're stepping up here. You're stepping here. You have a promotion. I'm going to take elite guard on a mortal. Make sure we get some experience on this catapult to level him up to heal him faster. And then the Courser will take the city and hopefully get a promotion. Not quite. The city has a loyalty issue. Let's just reassign Victor to it. <clears throat> no longer has a loyalty issue. We'll also keep the city. Loyalty is 9.8. Happy days. Sparta has also completed all of its basic infrastructure. Doesn't have very good stuff, but it does have a spot for a campus that's really, really good up here. It's a plus five campus. We'll get to work on that. I'm also going to faith purchase a builder in here to help the city develop a little bit quicker. And we'll repair all these basic camp, uh, city center buildings. All right. So Canada, we have to get through this mountain range. Starting to come together in pieces. Upgrade that. <clears throat> Good to hear that you only talk like that you don't always talk like a campster on cocaine. I mean, I can do that if we really, really want to. Just it really depends on my mood and how talkative I feel. Doo -doo. Alrighty. Uh, okay. 
just doing a lot of tile improvements and stuff like that. I'm going to have you fortify. You're not so useful. You're going to heal up. I'm also going to take a uh, grape shot. I really like grape shot. Makes your guys really, makes your catapults really good at fighting units. Okay, so there's St. John. St. John also has walls, but we are a lot closer. Did we find Niter? I need to double check that actually. We have Niter up here. We have zero Niter. Which means we have to purchase that and purchase a builder here in order to be able to get any mid-game tech units. It's unfortunate that our hand was forced to make those investments that I don't want to make right now. But that is what it is sometimes. You just got to do what you got to do. I'm not attacking through here. This looks like a nightmare. There might be open terrain to the north. So I'd rather attack through the north. Canada is one of the biggest pains he has to attack as Persia, though, because you can't surprise board them. <clears throat> I did just unlock a trade route, but I'm dubious of investing in a trade route. So here's why I don't want to build purchase my trade route right now. My trade routes do not yield a lot of gold. Um, I do not have a lot of gold. <coughs> I need a lot of gold to be able to upgrade my catapults to bombards. So I would much rather hard build it with one of my cities when its production is finished, like Paris. So I'll just build the trade route, even though normally in a normal game, I would purchase it because the return on investment is really high. I'm doing internal trade routes as Persia, which are not so great in terms of return on investment, in terms of gold. We also have diplomatic service. So we need to start thinking about our first spy. You're healing, you're stepping up. You're swinging out wide. You're coming up this way. You tell me that I need neither. I think I already covered that. But I appreciate your concern. Thank you. Uh, your concern is noted and ignored. <laughs> All complaints will promptly be burnt in a bonfire. So I'm just slapping down a random tile improvements in here just to get the city kind of going. Because it's going to be mass producing builders for me um, to send to my other cities. Okay, we have a promotion on this guy. I think we'll take commando. Plunder. All right. The good news is we are gaining momentum. The bad news is so is he. The other bad news is that there's a crossbowman inside St. John and it makes me deeply upset. Need a builder over here. There's just no improvements at all. In the vicinity, I need gold above all else to be able to sustain my army production. I think I will pick up the armory here for the great general points and the production. Although, probably at this stage of the game, it might be good to just crack out like three crossbowmen out of this city. Especially when we're coming up on merging armies and stuff like that. Watch Bordeaux become one of his largest cities. Well, it's possible. I did put a lot of investment into it. So it wouldn't be like too wild or surprising. The actual investment in here is ooh. So he tags two hits for me. There's the mausoleum. This city is now just silly at this point. Look at this. It definitely needs an aqueduct, like 100%. We'll get to work on that next turn. First, we'll get the lighthouse for some housing. Like, look at these. Look at this. It's got the mausoleum and the Petra. I'm going to try and grow this into a huge city. All right, uh, you're retreating to heal. Where's my other courser? 
city is now surrounded. Good news. Move. Heal. Heal. Uh, you need to go improve that. Your opinion on climate change, potato go. Climate change is a hoax designed to distract us from the real threat, <clears throat> which is a globalist elite designed to hide the existence of Santa's elves from us. You can't change my mind about it. Uh, okay. Couldn't you put fisheries or whatever they're called in your Petra City too? Yes, I could. It's not a priority right now. No peace. Oh, Jesus, I've made a mistake with this crossbowman. I might be able to keep it alive over here. I really hope this crossbowman doesn't die. I mean, first of all, why the hell do you care what I think about climate change? Second of all... Uh, I am, like, totally unqualified to have a professional opinion on climate change. As is the vast majority of people who talk about climate change. Okay? Let's be very, very clear on this before we continue. Second of all... Uh, <clears throat> there is a multi-billion dollar effort by oil magnates, people who own the oil companies... To try to mislead the public about climate change, okay? When somebody is trying to give you information, you must ask the question, why is this information being given to me? In the case of the climate change is a hoax information, it is because the people who are giving you that information will profit off the public sentiment around climate change denial. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Uh, do you have any recent guides on Japan? I do not. Could you put fisheries? Speak the truth. Uh, can you rename the city of Ray to Woodstock? Sure thing. How about climate change in Civ? I don't know. It's, it's a cool mechanic. I like it. Uh, what's the thing about the less you know the better, more, better thing, the more qualified you feel to talk about it? Well, I'm an expert on this one. <laughs> uh, no, no, it's called, I believe it's called the Dunning-Kruger effect. It's where if you have a little bit of knowledge about something, you think you are way better at something than you actually are. You are incapable of accurately assessing your skill level or level of knowledge on a topic um, until you are deeply invested into that topic. Is the simple... Uh, way that we can use the Dunning-Kruger effect here. City is under attack. And so that is why it's an important thing to always try to remain humble. Just try to be a little bit humble, you know? Like, be confident. Like, yeah, I, I think I know what I'm talking about. And I've done a lot of research. And, I, and I've done a lot of things. But if you have it, be humble. Be like, well, I'm not sure. But this is what I think. And here is why I think this. And that will get you out of like 99.99999% 9, of the problems that you get yourself into. Uh, build a great lighthouse. Free trade route. No, it's not a free trade route. That's the other one. Uh, rename Toronto the city of assholes. It's a Canadian folk song. Sure thing. Excuse me, I burped. None of you saw it or heard it. You definitely didn't see it. Croning Duger. So if you guys have questions, I'm kind of just playing the game right now. Uh, I'm not really narrating what I'm doing because I've narrated what I'm doing like a million times over. Basically what I'm doing is making mildly efficient decisions in a very quick way. 
Like, for example, planting a lumber mill on here. I don't know if this is like the most perfect decision I can make with this tile long term, but I think it's a reasonably efficient decision because it gives me a one food four production tile and not all the tiles in the city are improved. What I'm far more interested in is making sure that I make the right moves over here, which involves attacking the city with as many units as possible and minimizing the amount of damage that I take to any one unit so that I can escape. Urban Warfare is pretty good, actually. That'll give him a lot of combat strength. But if you have like a specific question, feel free to ask. What we're doing is essentially right now we are grinding the city down. Until we get bombards. We are saving up gold to be able to get bombards. We have our professional army plugged in to upgrade these bombards. It's actually about time we got these bombards in position. And it's also time that we maybe look to get another great general here because we are now moving into the renaissance era and so we need a great general to be able to use uh we, we need a renaissance great general basically uh rosa red violet blue Pornhub is down potato whiskey stream will do guys anyone interested in a civ 6 whatsapp group uh i would recommend against plugging your email into a live chat if you want to join some people for Civ 6 community games, go ahead and just join my Discord and maybe see if people want to play with you. Uh, it's totally cool that you want to find people to play Civ with. However, I think it is uh, a little bit of a... Uh, I don't want to say dangerous because I might be overselling it here. It's probably just not recommended to post your uh, email publicly in a YouTube chat. Ass or boobs? I prefer bellies. Get fucked heteronormative sexuality of the world. Uh, okay. When I see those tummies, man. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, what were we doing? I'm trying not to laugh so hard after I said that. <laughs> Shit, I broke. They call that corpsing, I believe. All right, let's go ahead and slap down an entertainment district. I also want an aqueduct here. Aqueduct into entertainment district. Your low crossbow is in danger. No! There's no escape. Well. It's unfortunate. Explain the six food, two production, two gold desert hill tile, please. Uh, which one? Uh, this one is getting... Uh, two faith, two culture from Uluru. It is getting two food, two, one production, two gold from the um, Petra. And it is getting two extra faith from my Pantheon, which is uh, Earth Goddess. Bellies make a funny sound. True. Beer bellies are the new bubble butts. True. How many hours do you have in Civ 6? Let me check. Uh, 1,800. Have you achieved a diplomatic victory on Didi before? And it just doesn't interest me. He went out like a champ. He did go out like a champ. Wait, he's still alive. You guys are like declaring him dead before he's dead. That's messed up. Name him before he dies? No. And here's why. Let's grab a pin. Ah. Tomb of the Unknown. I was going to say Tomb of the Unknown Crossbowman, but there weren't enough letters. Attack. Shoot. 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 Wake up. Retreat. Da -da -da. Uh, General Civ question. Once you secure a golden age, is it worth it to refrain from uh, getting away from further error score to benefit in the next era? It can be, but I just don't think it's particularly... 
uh, interesting gameplay, personally speaking, and I don't think it's worth my time. It might be worth your time if you want to play in that particular way. <sighs> he was a gladiator, and so he shall have the Colosseum as his pin. So that's less of like, is it worth it to do? It's more that I just don't enjoy playing that way. And I don't think it's effective enough for me to care. Okay, I need more niter. Where is the card? There we go, on that one. 75 gold. We will pull out natural philosophy we have enough tech for the next little while and we will plug in 50 percent resource discount Sink. retinue retinues we will upgrade our first bombard we'll do our next one in three turns we can start using this bombard for combat i really want this great general triggers cree tree <clears throat> excuse me Thr triggers three eurekas Square rigging, scientific theory, and industrialization. Great. It's a bunch of free sites. In terms of unit upgrades, I'd like to upgrade my crossbowman, so we will be swinging up there. Granaries up. Actually, I'm curious. If I take... Wait, we'll, we'll find this out next turn. Hold on. Let's get you in position to reinforce next turn. Head down this way. He lost his vanity. That's fine. I'm not worried about it, really. I'll plug... Uh, if it only costs me one, I'll plug it in. There's the granary done in here. I would like... A knight. Because that'll become a query here soon. Although, I really do need gold. I can't... Yeah. Let me have a look at this city. Needs a builder more than anything else. We have a builder heading up from the south, which is great. The four characters. Okay, we are going to step... Is this a hill? You're going to run away. What is this? Movement cost two. Grand. We step the bombard forward. I don't know why it has three movement. Is it benefiting from this? Is this like a bug or something? It shouldn't be benefiting from the great general, but it is. There goes the neighborhood. I meant to check if a card... Fuck. Fuck. Really? The boy who lived! Loyalty is a problem. Now that loyalty is a problem, I think I'll grab Magnus. You upgraded the catapult while it was affected by the bonus. Yes, that's what I think. I think that's a bug. And I think I'll have to like find a way to report that to the developers. So now I can faith purchase units, which is neato. Unfortunately, that does require that. Um, repair all of the things. All right, let's reassess. Where are we? Canada! Stop! <laughs> You're not allowed. I think I see America. Down here, maybe. Maybe it might be Egypt. All right, let's have a look at the city. Farm Triangle, yes. 
What kind of victory are you going for? Right now the plan is uh, domination. We got kind of forced into a domination game. I just wanted information about Ottawa. So if I attack this, I do very little damage. But if I take Suzerainity, oh my god. Does that count on their ranged attacks? I think it does. There's Nubia, nice to meet you. All right, so Nubia is in the game, which is yeah, kind of interesting because Egypt's in the game. Tempted to declare, declare a surprise war on Nubia. Um, purely just to be able to move my units faster. <laughs> just a really dumb reason to declare war. Okay, arena. 12 population room in there now. Beautiful. Pure domination or domination plus culture? Uh, pure domination. Uh, domination and culture are diametrically opposed. If I think I used that phrase correctly. Are diametrically opposed win conditions. To go for a domination victory makes going for a culture victory more difficult. To go for a culture victory makes going for a domination victory more difficult. Ergo, they are diametrically opposed. Which I think is what those words mean. Reason being is because in a domination game, if you kill a if you kill a player using domination, or uh, yeah, or you just generate a lot of grievances, people are not going to want a lot of diplomacy with you. They are not going to want to have open borders. They're going to denounce you. An important part of getting early tourism is getting open borders with people, having good diplomacy, not having to build units. Um, and if you fully kill a player. You will not generate tourism pressure against that player, making winning a culture victory harder because you have to generate because the amount of culture, you, uh, the amount of tourism that you need to generate a tourist, f uh, to, the, amount of, the amount of tourism you need to steal a tourist from another player is dependent on the number, the number of players that are in the game when the game starts. The amount of tourism you can potentially generate is based on the number of players that are alive. So if you start killing players, you need it's harder and harder to actually get the number of tourists you need. I, I have to do the math on this. I have to do a video on that sometime because it's it's a thing that people um, don't understand, and I talk about it all the time, and I have to explain it every time. All right. Uh, okay, we have two bombards, which makes me feel a lot more confident about pushing Ottawa. So there's that. That's an all well and good thing. The fact that I now have control of this pass means it's way more viable for me to go down the south as well. And take, come in this route. Let me ask the question here. Please tell me this isn't a hill. It's going to make my life a nightmare, isn't it? This is not a hill. Oh my god, I have to send my bombards to the south. There's no tiles to attack the city from range. We got our first spy. Let's send it to the Ottomans, not the Ottawas. Steal gold from here. It's only 100 gold, but it's fine. Any gold will do. Any gold will do, not any hole will do, chat. Get your minds out of the gutter. You said it, Potato. You were the one thinking it. Shut up, chat. Uh, would it work to play like Whack-A-Mole by repeatedly taking out the save with the most culture? No, again. Okay. Activate notepad. Blue. Okay. So, let's say we have a six-player game. Six players at game start. That means uh, you need 200 number of players 
equals 1200 tourism to steal a tourist if you generate 200 tourism per turn versus five players let's make the math even simpler uh da, 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 da. calc what if i take do do i'm trying to just double check the math on this it's divided by five it should be like 240 yeah okay so you generate 240 turn versus five players you will generate one tourist per turn no no you will steal okay so this is why so let me explain this if there's six players at the start of your game you need 200 times the number of players 120 tourism against a particular player to steal a tourist from them what that means is, if you are generating tourism against five other players, which you will be in a six-player game, if you're generating 240 tourists, on average, you will steal one tourist per turn because you take that 240 tourism number, you multiply it by the number of players who are still alive, and that gets you 1,200 tourism to get a tourist, which means you're, on average, you're stealing one tourist per turn. What's actually happening is every five turns, you steal five tourists. But we can just account that as you're getting a tourist every turn. If you kill one of those players, it still costs 240 tourism per turn. Uh, it still costs 12 the tourism. But now you're only making 240 times 4 equals 240 times 4. 960 tourism tourism per turn which is no now less effective tourists okay so uh what this means is if you kill one of the players it still costs 120 1200 tourism to steal a tourist from an individual player but now you're only making that 240 tourism against four other players so in order for that to be worth it you have to do a whole bunch of math to kill another player to see if the amount of domestic tourists you wouldn't need anymore would alleviate the lowered amount of of tourists that you're generating right anyway so it's like that's why the math works out the way that it does that you have to do a whole bunch of calculations that i don't feel like doing right now hey saxy what's up buddy Team Trees reached 20 million and YouTube rewarded Tanamongu for the effort. Woot. I see somebody is a fan of the quartering. <clears throat> of course, nobody actually realizes that the reason Tanamongu won is because she got her audience to vote for her. It's like really, really simple. It wasn't like YouTube went out and said, yeah, Tanamongu, she's the person we want to reward. No, she like literally just ran a popularity contest fucking big surprise <laughs> the youtube thought uh, maybe i shouldn't say that kind of thing that could get me banned now the the youtuber who is like popular with her audience was able to mobilize people to like vote for her in a popularity contest fucking stop the presses i'm shocked Anyway, uh, market. Goat Stimulator. We don't play that game here. That's more of a rural game. I really don't like that this guy is going to die. I swapped my final weeks, but I lived so all as well. Are you sure you lived? I've checked on some students before. And it's, it's never a fully sh assured thing that they live through finals. It's always kind of like, are you sure you made it? You look a little dead right now. You know you found a good channel when other tubers regularly check into the live streams? I mean, I go to Saxy's live streams whenever I see them. 
Ain't that right, sexy? You seen me on your stream. Maybe I shouldn't do... Voices, because that has, like, racial connotations, but I shouldn't... <coughs> Stoke the flames. It's really hard to be a European uh, that has, like, intersected with American culture, because to me, some of the accents in America are just silly. But if I do them, it's racist. <laughs> the only one I'm allowed to do is this the southern accent. Uh, okay. Do you think they'll make a Civ Seven? I mean, uh, does a bear shit in the woods? Like, what do you want? <laughs> what, what do you want from me? <laughs> <laughs> this, this is, a, is this a rhetorical question? Whatever is contrary to nature, of course they're going to do a Civ 7. I would be fucking shocked if they didn't. It's like the most profitable series of games in the 4X space in existence. It's very accurate. Death of the moment will be live later. And yeah, usually old-fashioned Civ folk got to be sticking together. Now I'm going to get flagged for racist typing. Get him! Get him immediately, and don't let him repent. It's the way of the internet. Alright, so Ottawa is falling. London is burning. All good things happening. Let's go ahead and pick up nationalism. London's not even in this game when I said that. Alright, uh, anchor what? Turn down for what? This city is growing like crazy. Let's do unit production i'm thinking some canites and stuff like that that's the worst southern accent i've ever heard i tell you what boy you got a pretty mouth i can't do it on command i, I have to be in the mood i have to like catch it just right it's like the right wind in my sails and i'm not Where's my pitchfork? It's in your shed where you keep your step redheaded stepchild. <clears throat> uh, right, what were we making? Let's get a courser as well. That's going to become cavalry soon. I also would just want a generally larger army. One bad American accent is okay. I used to do a pretty good parody Minnesota accent, but I can't do it anymore because I have I haven't I haven't watched Fargo in years. <laughs> uh, I can't do Irish accents, but I can't do quite other ones. I avoided on stream though. I like to do the German accent. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, we will just shoot the city, and then we will, you know, retreat this unit away. It was more Swedish. Yeah, it's good. It's very good. You know you've played too much Civ when you, like, know the right moves to make on autopilot. Dude, you know what I've been playing lately? Unironically, Car Mechanic Simulator 2018 is one of the greatest games I've ever played, okay? There is something just so comfy about disassembling cars. Wait, do I not have lumber mill? Yeah, I need mercantilism. Mm. There's something real comfy about uh, just disassembling cars and then reassembling them and then selling them for profit. Can you do a Scottish accent or is that racist? No, it's not racist. I don't think Scottish accent is racist. I don't think doing... Accents is racist uh, in certain contexts. Like, for example, uh, let me give you an example. So, like, if I was just to be like, oh, hey, I love haggis. It's haggis season, bays. Like, if I did just some awful Scottish accent and, like, just played on stereotypes. Yeah, that's, like, just a shitty accent. But if I was making fun of a Scottish person... Like, I know a guy who is 
a large flamboyant man who says okay in like a really high pitched voice it's okay for me to to make fun of him there because i'm not i'm not like just playing to stereotypes i'm making fun of a person not like an entire stereotypical thing now sometimes you can do that thing within certain contexts uh, like you know stand up comedy you could probably get away with it if you were doing it for a bit cuz usually stand up stand up comedy has a lot of like you know meta to it and stuff like that but trapped in the red dead 2 re recently it's such a good game i just can't play those kind of games anymore i just don't have it in me i get bored too quickly with those games what was that path thing you clearly had a path over there but all right get rid of him Talk about it. Scott's love Iron Brew. Listen, Iron Brew and what's that? Buckfast? Like literally fuels the nation of Scotland, okay? They put it in their power plants. You can ask Scottish people about it. Excuse me. Keep city. Uh, okay, real talk. What the hell is even the point of na melee naval units? Literally everything a melee unit arrangement does better. Good question. Um, they are their promotion tree is pretty tanky, and they move really really fast, so they can catch weak units. That is the main use that I found for them. So I've got a problem. Um, it's that I haven't snowballed enough yet. <laughs> Let's get to the killing. Killing and the chilling in the name of. Potato, what are your thoughts on Bigfoot? He's real and he's out there and he wants to meet us. He's just shy. Saxy Gamer does really good educational videos, I feel. Um, <clears throat> I like his kind of uh, lecture approach that he does with the kind of like little whiteboardy kind of things and the cute sort of what you call a background, graph paper background. I like it. I like those things. All right, time to become a musket man. Oh boy, here I go, killing again. Real. I'm, I'm hoping that I can maybe go around Montreal and get to Moreau. Go through this way. And then come back down for Egypt. Hopefully I could just skip this section of the map over here. Because this looks absolute awful to attack into. So we're finally getting to a point... Where we might be able to start upgrading some units and stuff. I just wanted one musketman. Rest of my resources will be going into other things. Have you ever had to go ultra late game for domination? Very rarely. Um, mostly just due to map size. Like the bigger the map is, the harder it is to effectively do a domination in a reasonable amount of time. Um, the hard part here was that I was attacked so early that I never got established, and so I've been pretty much playing catch-up the entire game up until now, which is when I've achieved strength. You can move Vic uh, to Ottawa. I could. Um, but we're only losing. Vote for yourself twice, you always win that one. Uh, double points for Great Generals. Uh, won both of those great thingies. My problem with this phase of the game. Oh, shit, Calgary, how dare you? Hmm. Um. 
So I have some field cannons now. My gold income is really, really weak. I need to get that up if I can. I got a settler for over here. It's so warm in my room, dude. I'm actually dying. Does Ireland have a negative opinion of the USA? I think Ireland has a nuanced view of the USA. Irish people are generally pro-USA in certain respects in that we like American culture, we like American celebrities, we like American music, we like going to America, we like American brands, we like American stuff, we like hearing about America, we're, we like American politics, we're, well, I don't know if we like it, we're very educated and interested in American politics, in a broad sense, at least people, a lot of people would be, um, but generally, Irish people would have if our if Ireland was a state, it would you would call us socialists. <laughs> if our like, if if there was like a lefty, like if Ireland was like the fifty whatever state in America, you'd be like that's the fucking one full of socialists who don't want us to go to war or anything. Uh, that that would be the prevailing political view of the rest of America. Ireland Ireland has a mixed view, I would say is a fair way to represent things. I'm going to build a catapult in here which will flip into a thingamadoodle. I'll also build one in here. Market for gold. We have gold in here. I would say, yeah, I'd say Ireland. Yeah, I don't know. I, I wouldn't say negative. I think negative is a bit harsh. I would say Ireland is very critical of America. I think would be a more fair way to frame things. Irish people will be very critical of America and American politics especially. Irish people think what goes on in American politics, by and large, is like the fucking most insane circus on the face of the planet. But we also think that, like, some of the shit that goes on here is pretty ridiculous, too. I would, and I, I, I'm not, I'm not trying to speak for the whole nation, but that's the impression I get when I talk to people. So, I don't know if that's true for everyone, but that's the impression I get. Um... I'd say a lot of Irish people now have a negative view of America because a lot of Irish young people are starting to talk with American accents, which is really fucking annoying to them. <laughs> really don't like that one. That one gets brought up all the time because all these Irish kids grow up listening to American cartoons and culture and all that sort of stuff. And so there's a, a little bit of a fear of a loss of Irish identity there, which is understandable when you have like fellas walking around Dundrum like they're from California, you know? I think Irish people's favorite part of America is taking the piss out of them. Do I peace out Canada here and switch to Nubia? I think I do. Give me everything you have you own. Everything. Uh like a Californian accent. Yeah, it's like a very disturbing trend to a lot of people. So we're gonna get our army moving over here to get the war with Nubia. I think we just peace out Canada. We have his capital, right? Yeah, we have his capital. Feld Kanonen. Rebellion in eight turns. It's unacceptable. Got a courser. I could be building up an army to deal with the Ottomans, but it's fine for now. Maybe I could get the Alhambra. Alhambra. I remember I made a meme where I put a sombrero on the Alhambra and said Alhambra. <laughs> oh, that was a good one. Oh, it was a dad joke, if I ever heard of one. Friendship with the Ottomans? Eh, he probably won't accept it. Yeah, I didn't think so. Even though it showed the happiness thingy, he probably doesn't like me because of all the grievances. I mean, I'll try. If it makes you guys happy.
I want to be very clear. Ireland was not an English colony. Based on what something someone said in the chat. Colony has a very distinct meaning. Um, I don't think colony applies to Ireland. It really depends on how you want to frame, like what you mean by the word colony. More accurately, uh, Ireland was a very much so precursor to everything else that went on in the British Empire. Every atrocity you can think of that the British did uh, in any other country, they did it in Ireland. Some would say this is where they learned their trade. The lowest. I'm fascinated by the relationship between nation states and the UK. What do you mean? It's, it's fairly straightforward and simple once you, like, hear the structure of it. Declare surprise war. Die! Give me your friendship. He won't friend me. Uh... It was a fantastic hey, Mount Rorana! Mmm, that's beautiful to see. Cities falling rapidly. Haven't seen that in a long time. Do you know how good that feels? To finally see cities collapsing the way they should? Under the might of the Persian Empire? Hell yeah, dude. Uh, Loki, if World War II didn't happen, Britain probably would have been stereotypical villain country of the world. I mean... Uh, to... I hate to break this to you. <laughs> this might come as a shock. They already are that. Go to a former colony. Or a country occupied by Britain. They will have songs about how much they hate the British. 100% guaranteed. You can take that to the bank. Like it's like if you're a former call like former country in the British whatever, one hundred percent, you will have songs about how much you hate the Brits. Like, not even. Slightly. Ah oh man, why is my loyalty so bad in here? Probably because I pissed off everyone in the world. Uh, it's like 100% probability that you will have a song about, like, just fuck England, fuck the crown, everything else, right? They hate them so much, they made hating the UK literally part of their culture. Like, that's how bad they're seen around the world. Um, yeah. Exactly, like, <laughs> it's like, the person was like, oh, if it wasn't for World War II, Britain would be the bad guy. They are the bad guy. And they still were after World War II. The shit that went on since the 40s, my God, you could fill volumes. And volumes have been filled of history books. All right, we have taken Kawa. He's established in Vancouver. Reassign you to K 
Morikawa. I mean, more so referring to the Nazi, but you also raise a good point. The Nazi... Okay, this is going to be a controversial statement. <laughs> Whoo, lads, buckle up, boys. The Nazis were like a speed bump in history compared to what the British did, okay? They did an awful lot in a very short span of time, but the British did it for thousands of years. And then built entire philosophical systems to justify the things that they did. I, I want to be very clear here. When I, when I when I say the British, I'm referring to like the government of Britain. I'm not referring to British people, okay? There's very few British people I take issue with, except for like the hardcore British nationalists who think the word great in Great Britain literally means like Britain is great. When it, it's like a just the name of the island. <laughs> uh, Queer is here. Thousands, that's going a bit far. I want you to go back uh, and look up when Ireland, or maybe a thousand years is more accurate. So Ireland was invaded like nearly a thousand years ago. So that's why I feel pretty confident in my thousand year number. I may, I, maybe I said thousands, then I misspoke. Definitely misspoke if I said thousands, but I will defend thousand to the death. Uh, right. I need more gold, which means I need to work. Well, nothing in here will give me gold. Maybe a slap down a chicken eats in here. Uh, too many Indians died because Churchill stole their food during World War II. I don't know enough about that to the to dispute it or agree with it. But I would say that sounds about on par for the kind of shit the Brits like to get up to. Rebellion in one turn. I want you to get kicked out this way. So let's start combining immortals. To kill this first, unfortunately. You must name a city Russell. You have this thing about saying that I must do things. But you have never demonstrated to me that I must do it. I think the difference... So here's the very... Um... Oh, it's... I have absolutely no problem. With British people. I think I, the only thing I have a problem with is that they, uh, a lot of people will act like Britain was like, Britain was like the best thing ever. And we, the British Empire, we did wonderful things around the world. We brought civilization and we tally ho, pip pip cheerio. We found tea and we brought it back. And then we lived all happily ever after. It was like, man, nah, you're kind of glossing over a few details there, buddy. That's what I take issue with. And it's like, as a country, it's fine. You guys are not doing anything wrong. You got reasonably okay food. Uh, reasonably good music. Interesting art. All that good stuff. All the good stuff that makes a country a country. Just, you got this weird little past that... I don't know why I chopped that jungle. I shouldn't have. Oh, nice. Somebody brought up Nazis and now people are bringing up communists. Okay, I'm officially putting the end to the conversation because we're just going to start talking about atrocities and this is supposed to be fun time. Almost predictable. Can't just have a casual conversation about how much we all hate the Brits, can we? No, you got to bring the communists into it. 
Always spoiling the fun for everyone. Goddamn commies. Uh, you take that back, potato. Our food is awful. Wrong. I do not know where this take that British food is awful comes from, okay? It's wrong. British, British food is specifically designed for people who drink a lot of alcohol, okay? If you drink a lot of alcohol, you can appreciate British food, okay? It's really that simple. It's the only correct thing. I really shouldn't build this thing. I don't even think of playing The Witcher 3. Not really. RPG games just don't entice me anymore. I need to cancel this. I forgot to cancel it. Damn it. I can't let this flip back to Canada. I need to take it for myself. It's okay food. Yeah, like it's decent. It's like it's it's good enough. Keeps you warm. It's unhealthy. It's got all the hallmarks. Good like, you know, get you through the winter kind of food. Keep city. I built this city. Kingston belongs to me now. Can we get that monument repaired? Can we get some growth in here? I should really be faith purchasing units. I also need to be upgrading units. I think I'm going to faith purchase a bombard. Okay, we took out that Aqueduct University. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, but what about those Incans and Aztecs who they sacrificed tons of boys and girls to those fake gods? Uh, those gods were real? Sorry, excuse me? Did you just call those gods fake? Oh my god, what's wrong with you, dude? What are you, a cultural imperialist where any god that isn't... I don't know what I was, where I was going with that. Just wanted to meme on a kid. Um, I think I, I think I definitely need to pick up a few more of these old entertainment complexes because I'm starting to have big amenity woes. And this is just purely for stabilization. Uh, I always take Scottish fish and chips over anything in England. I feel like everyone likes their own brand of ch fish and chips, right? Like. I think the Irish do it better. Somebody else is going to think the British fish and chips are better. Can we all just agree that fish and chips are really tasty? I'm going to put this in Kingston to help it grow and maybe survive. I'm American, duh. I don't know, the man, the Dutch, the Dutch have food figured out. I feel like you guys have like really wild interpretations of what good food is. You know what good food is? Food that's tasty and makes you feel good. That's it. It's the end of the conversation. It's all it needs to be is tasty. And that's it. I'd eat dog if it tasted good, probably. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, I guess. Why not? It's just meat. Uh, so in terms of upgrading my army, I would like a musketeer to combine here. I'll probably do an upgrade on this guy. I need another crossbowman, but I need other things. Probably combine these two crossbowmen together. There we go. I need a field cannon, so let's get ourselves one. We have one coming. Stroop waffles. Eh, I'm not a fan. They're okay. They're okay, I guess. What do you think about Italy and Italian food? I think they very, very carb heavy. They like their carbs. 
I think they have generally good food, but very, very, like... Feels very, like, just, like, carb overload almost. Like, pasta, breads. Like, all these things are amazing. Don't get me wrong. But I feel like if I eat too much of it, I just... I turn into a giant loaf of bread myself, you know? Um... That's my feelings on the matter. Hmm. Look at those defenses get ripped down. I think I'm running out of brain power here. I might shudder the old streamy weem and then pick it back up tomorrow. What do you guys think? We could get this hammered out tomorrow, I reckon. We have a pretty good start. Now it's all about just finishing it off. My brain power has decreased considerably over the last three hours of playing. I think it took a lot of brain power to navigate that very early war. Stroop waffles get stuck in your teeth. They're so sweet that they're fucking everywhere in the Netherlands. I swear I've never seen a Dutch person eat one. <laughs> I think people used to eat them in like a traditional sense. Oh, don't look at that. Quick, we'll draw a picture. Uh, paint. Your mom is great she is a kind lady uh There's her giving a thumbs up. Okay, that's it. That's the picture for today. I love you all. I'll see you tomorrow. Can you buy my drawing? Uh, one million uh, Irish pesos, please.